Yo, number 10, PM and A podcast. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you're listening on iTunes, Apple, whatever the fuck it is. I mean, uh, you know, the Apple one that I don't know what it is or any. What is it? Apple Android? Yeah. I didn't know what we were on. I still don't know. Do you know now we got... Anyway, so we're on Spotify, iTunes. We're on a bunch of different platforms. Thanks for listening. Uh, yeah, John. John Watson. John Watson. What's going on? How's it going, man? Not too bad. Uh, thanks, guys, for having me on the show. From uh, I know we've been talking over the last few weeks, and... Uh, you know, when you guys first asked me, one of the things I thought is, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We're going to talk about some some history. We're going to fill in and catch up and all that good stuff. So Just so everybody knows, John is one of my oldest friends. I have somebody who's an older friend, but not as, like, clo- ah, whatever. Anyway, well, we even, like, so let's talk about, do you want to talk about the first time we met? Like, the very first time. <laughs> oh, so, oh, my God. So, John and I, I used to go to a <laughs> private school. As you guys heard before in the podcast, Ernie's here. Ernie, say hello. Hey guys, yeah, how's it going? Ernie's I uh, I'm just gonna sit here, I guess. <laughs> well, the last podcast. Let me know what you want me to talk. Last podcast, you did way more talking than I did because you knew Fabian way. I knew Fabian. Than I, did. I knew Fabian. But, but um, uh, yeah. Anyway, so John's my friend too. Let's just see. Yeah, John's Ernie. Oh, he's my friend. He's first. all a friend. He's my friend. He's played hockey. He's my friend first. Played yeah. hockey for a bit. And well, I used to play I hockey. I don't know. I don't know what John. Goals. I don't know what John was doing, but. Anyway, guys, cheers. You know, you know what's bad when the uh, the goalie cheers, scores boys. more than the guy that's playing. Yeah, remember that. Remember that goal that I got right at the buzzer and they <laughs> yeah. didn't count it. <laughs> it didn't count. It didn't count. I know. I was so upset about that too. It was my first goal of the game, and literally, I shot the ball, and just as the buzzer went at the end of the game, buzzer went, and then it went, and then they're like, no goal. Yeah, but you're good at hockey, though. Nah, I I, I had you some good bad. seasons. Like the, my best season, like I had like. I think maybe twelve goals in one season, but they weren't very long. We only played once a week. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't. And there was only maybe season. what sixteen that's, games that's in the whole season. Yeah, I played on that. I played in the. D I had like that. ten goals one season, but the one season we did the five on five. Yeah, I didn't, score, I didn't score a single goal the whole season, not one. And then I I come out from he playing gets in that. Yeah, he played one game out, and he scores a goal. <laughs> and I looked at him, and I was like, I'm retiring. That's it. I'm not playing anymore. Was you in trouble with your arm? Or something? Yeah, I had to ten, you tendonitis my... in my tricep. Well, I still you... have it, but it's in his back, in his leg. Well, hang on. His... No, hang my on. leg was fine. What are you talking about? I played soccer. You got hit by a car on your bike years ago. That was years and years and years yeah, ago. Yeah, but is that yeah. the same thing because your arm? Uh, no, that was um, that just tendonitis as I grew grew older. Like oh. I noticed, like I couldn't, I wasn't able to throw footballs, baseballs, what? things like that. Like oh, it just came I up. played baseball a few years ago, and like halfway through the season, I had to stop playing because I. Oh shit! I, I just couldn't throw anymore. Like, mm-hmm. I had a good arm. Like, believe it or not, like I I play first base and like, I could throw a freaking rocket, man. But <laughs> and then it just my arm the just arm gets too sore. Dead. Like, it gets to the point like if I keep throwing, it gets to the point where I just I can't even lift up a pencil. Yeah, because it hurts so much. Yeah, your tendon all the way up to your shoulder. Yeah, like, and it was the AC joint. Like I had physio and stuff on. Same with no my way. leg when I got hit by that car. I had physio for like three that. months. I remember that. Yeah, that was a fun time. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. lady, she gets out. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. my bike frame's dented by my leg, but I'm okay. I didn't break anything. I remember that. You were like, we got fucking in my car. You were so pissed. You were so fucking, you were so pissed. Yeah, I remember that too. You're yeah. like, oh, guess what? I'm like, no way. You didn't get my car. I thought you were bullshit. And then it's, it's got a fucking bruise on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. That was bad. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, no. Uh, so what have you guys been doing? What I, I want to talk wait, about wait, you guys. Go back. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I was just saying yeah. How, so oh, okay. where right. did you guys meet? Oh yeah, that's right. So tell I the went, story. I was going to private school, as we said, <clears throat> and then I went to public school because it kicked me out because I was just being too. Uh, Explain why you got kicked out. Explain the last day, both of you. I do. I remember that. <laughs> that was that was a lot. so that was that both of our last days or just yeah, my last both day? Of our yeah, last days, you guys remember? both walked remember? out. Remember? So I got kicked out because I stopped listening to the teacher. I stopped doing homework. I stopped caring. Like I was getting kicked out. Like I had a world record for getting kicked out of class before O Canada. That's how like I was just like I didn't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I gave up. And so on our last day, Ernie and I were like, a, we had somebody pick us up. We were going to a wedding yep. or something, and, yep. a, and a friend came and picked us up. Yep. We were driving out of the parking lot, and you I was me- like, so I'm in grade five. No oh, wait, yeah, I was. No, in grade you're five. in grade four, and I'm in grade six because nope. I started grade seven there. No, 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 no. I was in grade five. Are you sure? Yep. Yep. Because I thought because I started William I went G. To Mr. I started Gam- William G. I went to Mr. Seven. Gamoff's class halfway through grade five. Yep. Because then oh, that, must have been halfway through, grew, yeah. John and I met in grade six, Mr. Rawlings' class. Oh, that would so make anyway, sense. So, anyway, <laughs> sense. grade five, you were in grade whatever the hell you were in. Yeah. John's uh, smoking over there. Um, 
So last day, we're pulling out of the the parking lot. We're not gonna name the school. Well, you know, Temple Baptist Christian Academy. That was the school we got kicked out of because it was like whatever. So we were pulling out of the parking lot early night. We didn't even synchronize it. Didn't we didn't even, talk. We yeah. We didn't talk about it before, and we both opened our doors <laughs> and we spit, spit on, spit on spit the, the parking lot. I we're just kids growing up in public school. Like you could have gone one. Two, three, go! Like it we was that both, perfect. Like, we just like both looked at each other and went like this. We nodded, yep. and then we went, <laughs> just spit out there. And I have never, I've never gone to that parking lot ever again. I have. Oh yeah, I, I have. I went one time to the, the church. Code, there was he a church the thing there. Anyway, I spit when I left. Anyway, and then I went to private. I went to public school, which was weird for me. It was like a, it was a weird, like just to see all the crazy kids running around, and I was the kid sitting there, like putting up my hand to go, like sharpen a pencil, or putting up my hand to go to the bathroom because I didn't want to get in trouble. So John and I met in grade six. Oh, here we go. <laughs> we were both playing soccer, and John was a smaller guy when we were kids. And I, I was still a pretty big guy. I'm not saying I'm big now, like six foot, but like, you know. The name's Little John. The name's Little John. And so life. John's running around like a madman. Mad so what you need to know is, John, think of John. He's got this really long, black, greasy, <laughs> greasy hair. And he's like this skinny, like crazy kid. Like, think of like the Jungle Book when they first meet the kid. <laughs> Mowgli? Yeah, like Mowgli. I, would, I wouldn't go that far. He was pretty wild looking. More, I was more Ethiopian than anything. So he's running around. We're playing soccer, and so like when I played soccer, I play I play things way too rough. I'm way too rough when I play sports. So he's running, trying to get the soccer ball. I grab onto his shirt and I rip it off his back as he's mid run. Then I really was Mowgli. So he, he's got this ripped shirt and he's mad and he fell down and we were really friends. So we go into class and John comes in and he sits down and he's in the front <laughs> row and we in the front row. He's staring down at the teacher walks he looks walks into the class, stops, looks at John like double take is like, What is going on here? And John's just sitting there with his head down, ripped shirt, just looks pissed. And the, the teacher looks around, is like, What is happening? Takes John out of the class. He had these like weird rolling shirts. Yeah, he had Rollings like gave, basketball gave short John a new shirt. He came in, John came in, sits down really loud, he's all pissed off, and I'm like, Oh shit. I pissed that guy off. And I think that we talked about it afterward. I don't remember what happened after that, but... Uh, I think we became more friends in, like, grade 7, though. Uh, no, William no. G? End of grade 6. Okay. End of grade yeah, 6. Yeah. When we went to William G., we were already friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were friends by that point. I think I remember you getting in a fight with Wesley Boyer. He grabbed him and was, like, kneeing yeah, him in he, the head. Yeah, he, he, that didn't even hurt. Like, I was he just was, like, what is this guy doing? He was doing? kneeing him in the head. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What is going on here? And John's yeah. like, you're crazy, man. Yeah, then, no, like, that, then, was, that was a weirdness. I do remember that. I remember and, that, uh, too. But, yeah, no, I, I think it was over that stupid schlocky game. Yeah. Remember the stupid yeah. hockey sticks yeah, yeah, and the yeah. board. And you, like, schlocky. put the, put the puck through the stupid holes. And it was a stupid game anyway, they thought of, yeah. So that's how we met. The first time I met John, I ripped his shirt off his back, and he was really pissed. And then one thing led to another. Yeah. Then we started playing uh, Goldeneye and Perfect Dark and making stupid videos, smashing boxes on our heads. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Remember when you smashed into the wall, <laughs> busted the wall, and you're like, oh, shit. You tried to, like, stack shit to cover it up. Oh, yeah. And my dad's like, what happened? What the happened to the wall? And you're like, I don't know. What happened over there? Why is that stuff piled up by the wall? I was like, I don't know. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, we didn't even fix that wall for years. We just left it there like that. Well, yeah, we were care. kids, right? We didn't we care. Do? Oh, fuck. I can't, yeah, whatever. Yeah, no, those were the good days, man. Oh, my gosh. We used to make those videos with the video camera. And, like, we would have, we had a fall <laughs> from upstairs, and you guys and were was like, in the backyard. It was like the view of a sniper rifle. Oh, so the, the sniper, camera, yeah. The camera was the sniper rifle. And then we're running around back there, and John would go, boom. And then we would, like, fall over. But the cool thing was there was, like, a smoke machine. Remember we had the smoke the machine? Smoke, yeah. I yeah. still have that, but it doesn't work anymore. But, yeah. Oh, man, we that made some That was awesome. Those were, the, oh, those were fun. We'd load them up on freaking, on your old... Windows 95 computer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we lost all those videos. Though. Oh, yeah. They're you have the hard. fogger still? I do. But I still have the strobe light. It doesn't work, though. That's oh, the no? only problem. It's, yeah, the wires are... I could rewire it, but whatever. Oh, man. You know. We had some crazy times. Yeah. Every day... So, John and I, every day after school, we would come over to my place, and we would play... We would play Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark. For, like, hours. Hours. What did we do? Homework? I didn't... That was homework. We didn't do homework. We never <laughs> did homework. We never did homework. We would just play video games, and then the only day we couldn't play video games is on Tuesday nights when I had stupid band. Yeah, and you were doing your... Yeah. I, I still remember when every time I'd come over to your house, and my mother would call me, and you would disappear. And then all of a sudden, all I hear is... 
while I'm on the phone with my mom, you're playing your bagpipes, oh, yeah, blaring yeah, yeah, yeah. them in my ear, and I'm like, "What?" Well, you did it every time. Yeah, it messed with you. Yeah. Oh yeah, you yeah. totally messed with me, man. That oh, was crazy. Yeah, you but, basically uh, lived at our house. Yep. Yeah, I literally lived, pretty much lived. did. Yeah. Well, you were family because the definition of family is if your my grandmother has a picture of you in a photo album. Really? I was my in a nana, photo album. My nana showed me yeah, a I picture a, a couple I months a photo ago. Get out of this here. Camera. And she's like, why do I have a picture of John in here? And I was like, Nana, why don't you have <laughs> Why a don't you? Like, he should be in every picture. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. No, then. Yeah, no. I, you know what? Kudos to your mom. Props to her, man, for putting up with that all these years. Now that I look back on it and I got She kids, was working so much, though. Like, I she know. was never That's really there, I mean. right? Yeah, you're right. Your mom was hardly ever. Right? She was working all the time. And we would just come home and then... Just rummage through the fridges and eat a bunch of or shit. Or like and go then... through the laundry room trying to find pocket change, pocket like change. money <laughs> to get, pe- to get sh- pizza. Yeah, go to short stop. Yeah, and go over short stop. And then, yeah, we had part time jobs too, so we'd order stuff all the time. And oh yeah, you worked at uh, I was working at Silver City. Silver City. Yeah, and then I worked at players, Wendy's yeah. and McDo- Wendy's at the time. You worked at across the road, Wendy's. Yeah, you worked at, I at McDonald's too. Yeah, I, I remember you were in McDonald's, but not Wendy's. Yeah, we're the Wendy's man. Yeah, he was there for a little bit, not for too. Right long. before TA, remember you got me the job at TA. Yeah, that's right. And I quit Wendy's. You're like, you want a better job where you just sit in an office and build barbecues mm-hmm. all day? Barbecues like, all day. Yes, yeah. I do. But you worked. Yeah, and then you came there, and I worked there for maybe what a couple more months, mm-hmm. and then I quit because I got a job at Linamar. Yeah. And did I you do short time. stuff? Did you ever do short no, stuff? Hell no. no. That was just us. Your no, sister worked at short stuff though. Yeah, yeah. We're not. Let's not get into that one. Okay. Oh man, wow. we got we have like That's years I mean. and years of stories. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's... So, what do you do now? Uh, well, I know you're doing HR. No, I'm actually I'm part of operations now. Um, I got a promotion back in March last year. Um, now the training supervisor at the plant. So now I have to oversee all the training for the entire facility there, and basically I base look after training for about 854 employees. So what do you guys do? So it's uh, it's it's beef processing plant. So it's slaughterhouse uh, fabrication. Oh so basically, yeah, we bring in people and. I, I tell remember them. when you started there. How long have you been working there now? Thirteen years. Holy shite! Yeah, 13 I remember years. when you started working there. Can we talk about a little bit about? You want to get into that, yeah, man? Yeah. People used to hate talking to me about no, that no, kind no. of stuff. So, so people don't know, <laughs> John used to work on the kill floor. So if people out there who are like you know against like like PETA and stuff like that like this is probably like they wanted to get the ins on like what yeah, happened so, uh, all right, are so, you allowed to talk about that well I mean yeah we're, we're a pretty open business we like to be transparent uh, you know we got nothing to hide from people um, you know the business that I work in uh, you know I won't mention the name of the business because that's irrelevant but uh, you know it, it's it's a very humane process and we have to be only because you know when you look at it this way we're not we don't we don't kill animals for fun. It's not fun. We're the way I'd see it is, you know, we're supplying mass amounts of people with food. It's food. You beef. know, it's beef. It's uh, you know, what? like when you think about it, like who here doesn't like a burger or a steak? When you think about it, right? Vegans don't. Vegans don't. Those Great. Weird Good. People. More for me, right? Yeah. I'll I'll eat your steaks. I don't mind. Vegans and it's curious. not like, you know, when I show up to work and I and, and I work with these people and Nobody at this business is going, yeah, let's kill animals yes, today. Like I it's not like that. it's a business, today. you know. And it's and you and you look at it as, uh, you know, the way we treat the animals there. It's we we treat them like your pet, like your dog and cat. We have except you kill them. Ex- ultimately, that's their fate, right? But what we try to do is we make it we make it as a humane process as possible. I mean, I've seen. Like you worked in the kill floor. Yeah, I worked directly in the kill floor. Uh, I've I've done various positions there. You know, chopping them up. I've shot them, uh, skinned them, got them, trimmed them, all that kind of stuff. And uh, can you say you used to have dreams about the cattle or something? No, I didn't really get nightmares or anything like I that. I that. did, I did at the beginning because well, it was yeah. new. But now I don't all see the anymore. Blood and stuff. Oh yeah, like it's it's a bloody place. It's not that bad. It's actually very hygienic. Uh, oh yeah, you it has it, to be it has right. To be. It's it's yeah. a food processing plant. Like <clears throat> we have uh, the CFIA, which is the Canadian Food Inspection. Agency. They're they're the federal government. They oversee our operations every day. All day. They come in. There's a guy. They there? work there. We have two veterinarians oh, no way. on site oh, every geez. day, and I, I mean, like we honestly, we had our animal welfare program. I was actually m- myself and my old boss. We had to take the corporate uh, training materials for our animal welfare programs. We had to revamp it a little bit because it was just it was outdated. So we looked at it. We revamped the entire. Uh, training material for all of the animal welfare stuff, and I'll, I'll, I'll kid you not, like we treat the animals there with such care, um, it's not even funny. Like 
as soon as they come off the if, truck. If you were to go there and work there, if you even like touch and touch any of the animals in an inappropriate way or show actions of like egregious actions towards them, you're gone. Really? You're done. It's over for you. Is there you. cameras and things? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yes, there, there is. And now the cameras are not there for not necessarily the animals' protection, but for the people's protection as well, right? Like, yeah, yeah, when, yeah. You, when you think about cameras, they're not always out to – they're not cameras to get you. It's there, it's there to oversee everything to make sure that things are done the right way. And yeah, yeah, yeah. whether, like, just this past – like, last January, I actually – I was working in our barn. And uh, long story short, I, I separated my shoulder. What? I had an animal come at me. And like, oh god, oh yeah, you you have a fifteen hundred pound cow trying Jesus. to kill you, and you have very How the little time. How the hell did you get out of the way react. of that? Well, this is what happened. So I was I was walking these cattle down, and you know this one, I don't know what happened. I looked at the cameras later, and something spooked it, and it came back running. I was closing the safety gate in front of me to stop them from coming back, and he ran the gate while I was trying to close it. So he threw oh. me about four feet back because he headbutted the gate flat on, like speared the thing <laughs> and i flew off the gate did like a power slide back and i quickly got up and was like get that gate closed or i'm done and so i got up the animals all turned around they went back towards the direction i needed them to go and so i got the gate closed they all left i said all right i'm going in so i went inside the gate but my first instinct was make sure i got a safe to get a safe place to get out in case that happens again so i went over to this one pen and there's bars that i can climb up on and so I immediately went to the pen. They started coming back again. So I stepped up onto the onto the gate in case I needed to get out quick. And no word of a lie, I literally made eye contact with that same animal. And the second I made eye contact, you know, the sixth sense kicked in. It dropped its head down. It charged right at me. And it was probably about me to you away. Oh, well, that's like and so I I literally had feet. split seconds to react and get out of the way. And I literally climbed up that gate as fast as I could, kicked my legs up in the air, swooped right underneath my feet. And then I lost my balance. I keeled over and I fell about six feet shoulder first onto a concrete floor, oh, separating my shoulder. Yeah. It was either that or that thing was going to kill me, right? So, and like you got to be able to react like that. And, and you know, I made the right choice as opposed to, uh, you know, being aggressive towards the animals and things like that. Because believe it or not, like I do care about the animals, I care about their well being because. If you don't treat them right, it actually affects their meat quality. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. And if, if it's... Because they tense up, right? Yeah, so it's something like where the adrenaline kicks in and, you know, it, it once they once they get stunned, you know, all that adrenaline settles in the muscle groups and it, it, it messes with the meat quality. So we have to oh. try and keep... We have to make a calming environment for them. So that's what we try to do. And Did you, do you ever hear the stories? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, go ahead, man. Just, like, just to this point to interject... Do you ever hear the stories about, like, in India and stuff, they really, like, reserve the cows, like, revere, not reserve, what am I talking about, Re revere the cows, and so when they're about to slaughter the cow, they get the sharpest blade, this, like, big sword, and they go over to the cow, and they're petting it, and the cow's just sitting there all nice and, like, feeling, like, loved, and then it's all of a sudden just, like, instant death, and then the cow's, like, just dead, so it's been relaxed, it's, like... That, that's the thing. It's like exactly well, what you're saying. I, I, that is, I would say the, the whole instant death relax thing is totally not realistic because oh. their nervous system would react. They'd start kicking. They would, they would react in a very negative way. They would start flailing around. Well, supposedly it's so sharp that it's like an instant. Like they just go. Uh, even well, even then, like because what we do is like we have <clears throat> we have very we have trained specialized people that do the bleeding and. Uh, basically, they're required to, um, you know, sever the two main arteries in the neck, and then obviously the they're art, trained. The for main, that where they, where yeah, they know where it is. Uh, they cut. Well, I don't want to get too much into detail about it because it, it's, yeah. it's 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 sure, a part sure, of the sure. process yep. where we don't really like to talk about too much. Yep, yep. Um, but basically, they they sever some ma the major arteries and then the one major artery, major artery to the heart. And basically, that's when you get your bleed out when you hit that artery towards the heart. Yeah. And uh, you know, there's always reaction to it, and then even several minutes after they're they're bleeding out, they still have their nervous system still active. Yeah. So they have reflexes where you know the legs will kick and things like that. So even f for for that story where someone just quietly just kind of <gasps> stick yeah, it in yeah, yeah. and then just kind of fall down and dead, and that's that's totally that's unrealistic. Not a thing. Yeah. No, no way. But it definitely is a thing that they got to be like in a calmer state. Not Absolutely. Yeah. No. It's uh, you know, it, it's it's a fascinating process and. Uh, I actually had the opportunity to take my grandparents on a tour there. Oh, no way. I didn't get to show them that part of it only because it's such a sensitive area. Yeah. We don't just let anybody go back there. So 
I know you probably like probably don't want to go into any more detail, but like, do you have do you still have people like picketing it? The the plant? oh, absolutely. Oh yeah, <clears throat> we still get people yep. standing outside the gate, you know, holding up their signs. I don't say anything to them. You know, you're doing your business, whatever. Yeah. You know, I got no comment. Be- only be- mostly because you know what. If I say something, I'm just opening doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just getting... And they, can, and they, can, say, they can just videotape yeah, you. Yeah, and... they could take it out of context. They could do whatever they want with it. So better be safe than sorry. Just keep your mouth shut. Let them, let them sit there, picket line. And now, actually, they're legally allowed to stop a cattle truck for two minutes. So they can stand in front of a cattle truck, force it to stop. For... You're going to stand in front of a transport truck? Yeah, they do. For two minutes? For two minutes. They're legally allowed to do that. And then what minutes. happens? After, so what are they saying? Then they have, the timer? Then they, they have to let the truck go again. Yeah. Or that, and then you get the police involved. Yeah, then yeah. you can get the police involved. Yeah, the police, the police are usually there just to kind of, they're just watching. It's so interesting because, like, veganism is such a big thing right now. I was like, oh, I'm a vegan and stuff like that. Like, the mistreatment of, like, animals and, like, but, like, so I know someone else who owns a chicken farm. Mm-hmm. And she was saying, oh, this person was saying to me, she, he, whatever they are, uh, was saying to me that, like, it's a open concept. They let the chickens run around. And the chickens are just there to be meat. They're just meat, and they treat them like you know they treat them nice, and they they treat them like comfort. But like they sometimes have people like they've heard of you know like picketing or talking about how like yeah. there's animals and stuff. But like there's people out there that are in this industry of making meat. I guess you could say the meat. What do you call it? The meat Food. industry, Food. Food, industry. Food industry, and like they're they're there to like everybody eats meat. You know, it's going to happen. This is, it's a process. It's a, it's a, they're going to have to make so much meat and so much processing for the amount of uh, the need that's out there for meat. Yeah. And they're going to treat them as best as they can. So there's like, like you're saying there, you put in facilities and you put in these protocols to make sure that it's safe and protected for the animals. Like it's not mm-hmm. just all like, not just all like just killing. Oh animals. yeah. No, like it's not just like the cows come off the truck and just walk into the blood, this giant blood yeah. dirt. Yeah. You, you got a like, machine gun set up. It's like walking. <laughs> yeah. Them. They're just like, <laughs> <laughs> they're just laying them out. There's another 40. <laughs> no, like, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's no, a it's, process. It's, it's a very humane process. Legalized it, humane, yes. as humane as it can be. It has to be. And we like, need. yeah, like we understand that ultimately what their, their, their fate is death. Why not make it as comfortable as they can yeah. in those last few moments? You know, instead what of, else do you do to make it more calming for them? Um, Is there anything weird that quiet, people wouldn't even think? Quiet. Uh, they like the quiet. They, uh, you know, cattle are interesting animals. I don't know. You guys ever heard of Temple Grandin? Mm-mm. So she's a she's a professor, I think, and she's she's an expert in animal welfare, and she's autistic, mm. and she she honestly knows cattle like better than humans so she has like asperger's or something yeah like she's very yeah. very intelligent she yeah. actually designed our barn uh at our facility and no i actually way. got to meet her once oh no way and i had a conversation with her for about a very very intelligent woman and she understands cattle behavior so well and basically there's there's characteristics so there's there's different types of cattle right you got like your show cattle you got your field cattle you got you know or range cattle. You got I didn't know that. You got feedlot cattle, and they all react differently to human contact. No way. Based on their experience with humans. Oh. So you've got show cattle that are so close, used to human contact because they have handlers that walk them around because they're show animals, and then you got your field or range cattle. They have zero contact with humans, so oh, yeah. you you can't even get close to them because they have no idea you're a threat or not. And then with feedlot cattle, they can vary because they have interaction and feedlot cattle. Are, well. Mm-hmm. They're in they're in farms to be fed for their beef. It's basically it's that it's the it's like a yeah it's like a, a the crop of cattle they're growing yeah. and it takes people to feed them. So with feedlot cattle, they're they're what they call a flight zone. So what we call a flight zone is basically personal space. Mm. And basically, you have to be as a handler, you got to be able to determine how close you can get to an animal before they start to move. Mm. So as as a as a animal handler, when you're walking into a pen with cattle, you have to recognize what distances you can utilize to move them the way you want them to uh, to go because when, you, when you're going face on with an animal, they're going to back up. Yep. But as soon as you pass something they call a point of balance is when they will go in the direction you want them to go. And this is all mm-hmm. Temple Grandin's scientific research that she developed around animal behavior. And she, she can ide- you can identify cattle that are showing signs of aggression. They can sense fear. They can sense like micro, like these little micro movements they have. Yeah, like she oh. analyzes all this kind of stuff, and uh, that's what we train our people to recognize. Like we teach them about flight zone. How how points. long of a training process is that? So the training pro, uh, the actual training material is about that's uh, about three hours of you know slideshow presentations, diagrams, videos. They do a test. Uh, we talk about that absolutely. So I actually incorporated um, drill training. 
as part of the completion of their training. So when they go up to the barn, they're paired up with a buddy system. They're not to be left alone to work with cattle. They're not allowed. They have to be with someone for weeks, mm -hmm. weeks and weeks and weeks until they're deemed safe enough to go on their own and they demonstrate the abilities to successfully herd cattle mm. with an observer. And obviously that person will go in with them. So they demonstrate, you know, exit path strategies while they're walking in. Because you got to have an exit strategy. When you're walking in, the first thing you're thinking of is, okay, if something were to happen, what's my closest exit? Mm. Because you got to react quick or you're, you're done. So they have to exercise. They have to demonstrate all this stuff. And then before we release them onto their own, I designed a, a, a drill training where I go in there and they have to exercise their strategies and methods. And they, I portray myself as an animal. I take on characteristics of a cow based on... The but you love that. Oh, it's it's quite fun because I mess with people, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, So I'll, I can do things like, you know, I could be an Olympic animal. I could be a really aggressive animal. I could be a, a scared animal. I could be a calm animal. Uh, and I take on all these different characteristics. And I display myself in terms of, like, if I'm going to be aggressive, I'll stare you down. I'll look at you and... and show that emotion toward you so you can recognize what mm -hmm. characteristics I'm displaying because animals you can when you look at them they don't hide their emotions they're everything's up front yeah. so I'll like I'll broaden my shoulders at them or I'll start walking slow if I'm a limper and I analyze and I watch them as they're trying to get me out of the pen so are they staying close to exit strategy or exit routes I also use flight zone I let them get a certain distance from me before I react mm -hmm. and that can vary so I can let them, they could be 20 feet away from me, I start moving, or they can be three feet away from me and I start moving, depending on the type of animal I'm portraying. And it's, I don't tell them, it's up to them to figure that out and then adjust their handling methods towards my behaviors. And then I can charge at them and they have to be ready to get out. Um, and that's one of the, I do, I think, nine drills in several different locations uh, throughout the entire barn system. And then I also do time trials and I make them run certain distances within certain time frames and they have to hurdle over the gates and they only have seconds to do it. You can't be a big fat idiot at these jobs, obviously. You'll be surprised how quick a fat man can move when he needs to. Yeah, but we're engaged. <laughs> like, you mean, like, you're talking, like, these kind of, they got to be <laughs> smart enough to read an animal. you got to be quick enough to jump over a fence. Like, yeah. you can't be like, so, like, oh my gosh, man. It's, it's, the, <clears throat> the training's pretty rigorous and the sensitivity in the barn is very, very serious as well. Like, they don't, our business will not tolerate any acts of cruelty towards the animals at all. What so about, like, can you pet them? Yeah, that's fine if they'll let you. The cattle will, if they let they you don't pet usually... them, usually they don't. With, we do dairy cows as well. Dairy cows are very, very used to human contact because they're, you know, what they you get milked. Do, what do you mean you do dairy cows? So we do two types of cattle. We do what we call fed cattle, which is feedlot cattle. And they're the, you know, they're the younger cattle that are bred for their meat. So they're bulked up. They're, they pack on the weight. They're big. They're strong. They're youthful. Uh, and then we also do dairy cattle, which dairy cattle are much older because they're being processed because their milk production is no longer mm -hmm. good. Oh, jeez. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what happened to those cows. So, there. yeah. So we use we, we do those cattle as well. And we most of it turns into, you know, ground beef and things like that. Because, mm -hmm. again, it's what else are we going to do with those dairy cattle? So, yeah. We do, we do all sorts of stuff. And then uh, the process is very unique. We have... Uh, Approximately, I'd say around 854 workers across the entire plant that process the animal from start to finish yep. to the point where it's in a box. So that pen job, is it uh, is the turnover rate pretty big? I was about to ask that too. What's the turnover rate? Uh, right now, um, it's actually not bad. Uh, I would say we're about average across the board for factory work. Uh, I won't get into the numbers, but yep. uh, you know we're we're definitely we're under 15 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, for turnover and that's voluntary turnover like people quitting things like that yep. uh, you know we, we we looked at things like retirement and students and big key or uh, involuntary uh, mm -hmm. terminations things like that and we try to filter out those numbers we just try to look at okay how many people come into our business and leave our business on their own because either it's not for them or right. whatever it may be we're not right? hiring the wrong people we're not hiring the wrong people so we yeah. look at what's our turnover for people that are quitting and mm -hmm. it's actually not bad it's it's pretty good and you know since since I've been in my position one of one of my metrics that I'm based on is around employee retention and engagement so I really focus in on the people. So when I go to work every day, you know, you got to be super enthusiastic. You are a super, super and, enthusiastic. Yeah, and, like, I get compliments from people. And right now, like, I do uh, – I'm doing this leadership training with our lead hands. 
and so it's a car it's a cargill well, train guess, train the trainers guess i dropped that no, you one didn't, no you didn't they didn't catch it anyway oh i guess we can we can edit that anyway right maybe yeah maybe, maybe oh it doesn't matter <laughs> is your job gonna get mad at you for talking uh no, I mean, like, it's a transparent business, you know. Then like, don't worry about it. Obviously, it's we got nothing to hide. So, I mean, I got nothing good good things to say about this business. It's a, Cargill's a great business. You've been business. there for 13 years. 13 so years. It's a great business. It really is. It's, it's the food industry. You know, it's it's a very large company. And, uh, you know, it's I, I'm proud to work there. I really like it. It's a, it's a great business. So, what you said from start to finish, you have over 834? Well, 800 and – about around 800. It's, in, it's flux, it fluctuates. So, from start to finish, what where does all that meat go? Uh, all over the world. World. All over the world. I thought we it was have, just Canada. No, no. Uh, between between now, we have two plants in Canada. Oh. Um, our plant we process approximately ten thousand a week. Ten thousand cattle a week. About ten thousand a week, and then our our other plant out in Alberta, they they do about I don't know triple that. They do, well, about, I they do about four thousand a day. Oh my God! So we're a quite small plant, but we do business all over the country. We actually, our business supplies sixty uh, percent of Canada's beef. Holy shit! Yeah, just between our two plants. Yeah. So when you're getting the cattle to come in, are you aware of what type is in that pen at a time? Like when they're yeah, when you they're analyze all it. You go in before you? you walk in. You got to analyze, and then there's also like people from literally from the time they come off the truck, you start you start trying to figure out what they're like what their behavior is like um, so they're not tagged or anything so that way they know what they are no just... we don't tag them uh basically all we do then is there's a lot of communication involved with uh, via the radios and things like that so uh what they'll do is if somebody sees an animal that's acting up they'll just mark it down and they'll say hey there's you know there's an animal in this group that's aggressive so you know just be careful when you're moving them because mm-hmm. you can't keep you can't identify the one they all they all look the same like as they move around you got brown ones, black ones. They all moving around. They mixing in, so you can't really tell which one's that one. Uh, mm-hmm. But if you if someone says to you, hey, just watch when you pull that pen. There's one animal in there that might be a little aggressive. So when you just you just throw the red lights on when you go in, right? You just get your get your guard up, get ready to go if you need to, and hopefully everything goes well. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, it goes well. Everything goes well. Like very very rarely do you get cattle that act out of line. Because let's let's face it, cattle are dumb animals. They're super dumb. They're dumb. Well, you know, I worked. You remember when we used to work at the Snyder's farm? Uh, doing the hay. Yeah, I remember we used, that. Remember when we moved the cattle from the from the fields? Were you there for that? No, I don't think I was. Oh my god, that was probably another time. Oh my gosh, remember? Were you there when they got out? No, I wasn't mm-hmm. there. I never did that. I did the hay, and I hated it. He hated, hated it. Hated, <laughs> hated the hay. Well, the one they're so stupid. Like, yeah. when, so when we try, yeah, when we're trying to move the cattle from fields to fields, <laughs> like they're absolutely so stupid. Like they're like, so I had no idea how dumb they were, and so I'm trying to help them move the cattle from the field to field. And they're just running all over the place, and they're just saying, "Keep a line, but don't get too close." And I guess one of them was running at me, and they were like, "Get out of the way, get oh, out of the way." Oh yeah, I'm like, because what they do is when they come at you, they don't try to like body slam you they, they try, try to run you over no they try to pick you up what they put their head down and throw you no they way they scoop you yeah guess what they were saying get out of the way get out of the way yeah so. they'll, they'll drop their head down I'm gonna do you want another beer uh bang on okay. buddy you for your, your beer? so so you've got so if you've got these people in the pen what is the the amount of time it takes for them to be in that pen by themselves no trainer no nothing like they you've like how many assessments do you take before you're you're in there by yourself doing that pen job it could take it depends on the person and their ability to uh demonstrate what's required to be done so i mean we typically um, one month is the about the shortest amount of time Mm -hmm. um throughout that time uh you know their supervisor will follow making sure that they're doing everything they'll They'll watch them, observe them. Uh, now, what we also do is uh, every quarter uh, we're required to do uh, critical task observations on all of our barn personnel. So what that means is someone from either myself or the health and safety department will go in and observe every barn employee to ensure that they're performing their tasks as they are trained to do. Yeah. So we look at all those aspects, and then we just basically fill them out. We submit it so that you know we get that completed. We have conversations with them. Uh, we have to get them to sign off on a document stating that, you know, yep. these are the things you're demonstrating. These are the things that you've lacked in. 
you need to improve on this stuff, mm -hmm. and then we have to follow up again, making sure that those corrections are made so that they're performing to what the way they need to be because they're right on the ground level with them. Mm -hmm. They're not elevated. They're not below. They're they're right there with them, and they're within feet. Uh, is that is that one of, yeah is that one of your like higher degree of employee kind of thing? I don't want to say higher degree, but is that you one mean of the like more, someone that's that just more stressful? Like, let's say let's call it stressful. It's actually a very calming job. It has to be because we have to create that calming environment. Mm -hmm. um, and with cattle, like they can pick up on on your phys on your emotional state. So if you're if you're scared, they know you're scared. Okay, let's not call it stressful. Let's call it higher higher trained employees. Usually, that's usually. For yeah. In other words, yeah, nobody ever starts in the barn. We do not yeah. recruit people to go work in the barn. You have to be in our business for at least six months before you're even considered to go work in the barn. Yeah, I, I do health and safety at my place. Oh, nice. So, I, like, I every three months we'll do the assessment as well. So we have uh, we, when we get new employees, they have to be in the truck for so long, and then we have to get them because the ministry requires them to have their tickets to operate the equipment. Then I'm certified now to do like I've I've been done that for about. I've been there for about 12 years so then certified so now i can i'm government qualified that i can do like when you go to school to get your tickets for equipment i can actually sign you off to do that yeah we're taking i like to take photos of the beer I pictures drink. of his <laughs> anyway, anyway, beer. i was just taking a picture of the it's beer beer. it's <laughs> it's crazy though like you've got to have like your ducks in a row and it's oh yeah like there's so many legal obligations mm -hmm. and it's funny mm -hmm. how people so many people don't realize what it takes they see it as frustrating. Thing, it, to get yeah, yeah. where we need to go. Yeah. People are just, well, why don't we just do it? Yeah. It's like, yeah. well, it's not that simple. Yeah. Like, there's a lot yeah. of things. And, like, you have to check off every box before you do it. And there's so many protocols you got to follow, like, in terms of, like, the like the Ministry of Labor and the Occupational Health and Safety Act. Like, you got to follow these rules or you're done. Well, especially with the ministry. The ministry oh, yeah, the ministry, no yeah. Joke. We get trips from them. We get, we get business from them yep. every, every once yep. in a while. Uh, you know, we not too often, but, uh, you know, when something bad happens. That's exciting, though, dude. That's good, and like, and you, you're what the position you're in now is what? I'm sorry? the uh, operations training supervisor. How long have you been in, in that position now? Uh, almost a year. Are you liking it? It's uh, it's got its challenges, that's for sure. Like right now, I got a bunch of assignments I'm working on. Um, was your pro uh, predecessor was he pretty on the ball or predecessor? Predecessor. Uh, yeah, he's actually the barn supervisor. <laughs> Transformer, how, 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 that's wants. all. How, 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 uh, yeah, his role and my role, uh, it's totally different because when he was the training supervisor, he was part of human resources. Mm -hmm. Now the training supervisor is part of operations. And uh, someone doesn't look, someone looks pretty disgruntled with that beer over I'm there. Not a beer here. It's not really good. This ain't beer. This guy's good. Hey, is that, uh, what's that beer like? Is that good? It's still good. It's still <laughs> good. How's that beer tasting? Real good. <laughs> what do you guys think of these leg muscles? <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let's. Uh, yeah, you got some Sorry. pizza there. Just so oh, everyone man. who's listening, we're just alluding to an inside joke. We're uh, making fun of someone. Yeah, yeah that beer's not very good. No way. Anyway. Oh, but it, it's so it's nice when you can go to work and you like what you do. It makes. Yeah, I do. So I um, I take it really seriously. Like I've actually I I missed a day this week because the schools were closed. My wife had to go to work. She's a she's an, uh, a nurse at the uh, hospital in in, in Fergus. And uh, so she works in the operating room. So she she had to go to work because well. Yeah, you gotta go to work. So, um, then it was the schools were all closed. So I, I texted my boss and said, "Listen, like, schools are closed. I'm stuck here with my kids. My wife's gone to work. I, I gotta stay home." And you know what? My wife's telling me all day, "Oh, you're so lucky to stay, stay home." And I said, "No, I'm like, I'd rather go to work. Like, I, I, I actually work somewhere where I actually want to be there every day because I want to get my stuff done. I want to make sure, yeah. you know, that I'm contributing and getting, you know, all the assignments that I got to get going done." Uh, because they're important to me. So, and when hmm. you, when you work at somewhere where the work you do is important to you, obviously you got a good culture of people that you're working with, and you know what, the people that I work with are great, uh, very very professional people. We like to joke around a little bit, you know. We uh, <laughs> speaking of which, we have uh, the safety team at our at our facility. We have uh, we do the circle game, you know the circle game. Circle game. Oh, the, the circle, circle game. game. So, oh, yeah, put it below your waist. Yeah, they, you put it in the circle below your waist. They look at it, whatever. So punch there's them? No, so what we do is we have uh, – we have a th there's three of us that are involved with it. One's the ergonomist, and the other one's our uh, health and safety supervisor. And if you look at it, you get a point. And whoever has the least points at the end of the month, the loser's got to buy them a coffee. No way. So that's what we do. So just sort of something fun to do around mm -hmm. the office, mm -hmm. right? So uh, – I'm Would actually you, going on vacation in a week, so I got one more week of work left, and then I'm on vacation for a week. Um, my wife going? and I, we're going to Mazatlan, Mexico, Whoa. for the week. And uh, the kids too? 
Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's going to be the best. So, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I love you, kids. So, you have uh, – she has three, right? Mm-hmm. And so, how, yeah. how, old, how old is your little guy? He's four now. Four. What, a, what an age, eh? Yeah. So, I came, <laughs> I came home today from work, and they're, they're already home. And uh, my oldest has got a – two of his girlfriends and a buddy over and they're all down in the basement talking and my son's I want to go downstairs and he's screaming and yelling Aah! I'm just like no like chill up here like he doesn't want you down there he wants to hang out with his friends leave him alone he's like I want to go down there and he takes his plastic hammer and he hits me with it and I look at him and I said I'm like go to your room and I'm just like I want to so I'm like did you just hit me and I'm just like you I'm like you apologize right and I was like I'm sorry and he gave me a big <laughs> hug and, yeah. and then later yeah. on he does it again like he wants to go downstairs and then he punches me in the chest and I look at him I'm like what did you hit me for and he's all like I'm sorry <laughs> like, <laughs> he's, he's four years he's old four years old like he's had, he can't control his emotions at that age and no heck, no no even at 14 you can't control your ages your, we your can't emotions. control emotions until so we're 25 25. It's, 25 is our lucky number. We should have done a lot of things by the time we were 25. Yeah. I don't by the think time any I'm of 25, them. I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you a million dollars. I'm 25. I'm 25. Hey, you want a, want a large pizza? I'll give it to you. I'm 25. So, so sorry. It's such a funny age, Chloe. Four. Four, yeah. It's, she's, uh, Chloe's, she's starting to pick up on, like, Dad, I'm freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> Are you trying not to laugh? My son's right into Minecraft right now. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, he loves Minecraft and he. He'll watch videos on YouTube, and, and then he'll go and play, and, like, he's actually, he's, like, building stuff. Out of, on like, the computer? With, no, on the PS4. Oh. Like, he uses a controller, and I started teaching him how to play invert, so X and Y axis, mm-hmm. so up is down and down is up instead yeah. of, so mm-hmm. I started teaching him invert, uh, and, I mean, yeah, I'm going to knock everybody that plays regular, because invert is better. It's, I don't know. It's because it's a natural head tilt when you think about it. Think of the top of your head as an analog stick. Right. When you lean, f- push up, your head goes down. Right. When you pull it back, your head goes up. Up is down. Down is up. I don't. I don't I'm gonna it's, pull. it's a head tilt. That's okay. the way I look at it. So when you pull back on the joystick, <clears throat> your head goes up because you're pulling back on the joystick. Oh, you mean so like for the view? Yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and that's that's how I've always played. And yeah. a lot well, of people find that hard to do. They think most people are just you know you press up, you look up. You press down, you look down. No way. Yeah, but if you actually think of it as a head tilt, when you go pull back your head goes up when you pull forward or pull up it goes down i'm trying to think like when we played video games was it was it was it was it the uh, analog uh yeah when we played playstation and yeah, yeah i mean and 64 and well n64 um i'm trying to remember now that was different because it was the yellow buttons that looked up and down remember and the joystick yeah, was just right. moved you because you, you can move your yeah, hand yeah, you yeah, use the hand. yellow you push keys down on the yellow you looked up no but that was different because they're buttons yeah, it's not a st- it's not an analog stick. Okay. So I always played when I push down on the button, I look down because it's a button. It was a totally different setup. Why are you teaching him this? Why you why do you why do you implement? It's a that? more advanced way of playing video oh. games. Oh good oh, boy. In my opinion. So anyway, can I just say one thing before we get on video games? I had this question about. So you guys are running through all this cattle every year. Is there a question about a lack of cattle eventually if, you're, if we're running through... It's something? a very good question. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that. So, yeah, I, I wrote so, it down and I wanted, didn't want to forget it. Okay, so yeah, so I'll get into that a little bit. Next, so a few next, years ago... Next question, Rogan. Thank you. <laughs> a little bit true. So yeah, anyway, uh, so yeah, so a few years ago, actually, we ran into what we call a drought. You know, cattle availability is low. Um, and the reason why... And, you know, it's, it's a market. It, it fluctuates. It'll go up, it'll go down, it'll go up, it'll go down. Uh, and we predicted that this was going to happen because of history. Like this is the way the market goes. We'll get a, we'll get, we'll have some years. Well, the market will be full of cattle. We're ready to rock. We're killing. We're going. But other years, cattle availability goes low. So a few years ago, we had low cattle availability, and a lot of our farmers were doing a. They were strategically holding back on their female cattle mm-hmm. to breed because they wanted to reflood their farms again. So we were having trouble picking up cattle. And, yeah, we were struggling. And then over the years, of course, we predicted that eventually the market's going to change. And right now, we are literally on the climax of cattle availability. We have There is so much cattle out there right now. Yeah. And ever since this TTP deal going on. Sorry, TTP is what? I don't know. But it's oh. it's a uh, – basically, uh, we're, there's a 10% tariff on exporting beef right now with Japan. And – this is something that's been going on with our federal governments and uh, Trump 
he kind of he backed out of this arrangement. Too he, too many patties. That's what's too too for. many patties. Yeah, yeah. Nice well, one. You ever been in, yeah, so on. so anyway, so Trump he Trump he disagreed up, with this. He backed out of it. So now we have actually a benefit because our exporting has a ten percent tariff now. So our customers overseas are they're getting a better price for Canadian beef. Mm. Um, and not only that, a lot of Canadian beef is not going to the U.S. right now. Mm. So hmm. we're actually in a position right now where we're working many many hours and we're actually the farmers are getting into a bit of trouble because they have too many cattle now oh no way and you know when you have too much stock your yeah, value yeah. goes down yeah um so we're actually in well, a position benefits right people in the consumer right we yeah get like cheaper beef right um yeah it could yeah it could turn that way i haven't looked at the market in terms of uh for the end user yeah uh, but i'm i've looked i've seen it or we've ours our business leaders have told us, like, this is what's going on. This is why we're doing so much overtime. Because uh, I actually got to work tomorrow morning. I got to get up what? go to work. Yep. Got to get up. We've been doing Saturdays for a long time now, doing lots of overtime. And right now, as our farmers are struggling to get rid of their cattle. So strategically, from a business perspective, is we need to help our producers out. Mm. Because when you think about it this way, if we're not buying a farmer's cow and they're losing money, because they have to keep it up. And they got to feed it. Yeah. And it gets, and the older it gets, the lower value sale they're going to get. Mm. Because cattle, they, their prime age is between one and two years. How, how, if a cattle wasn't killed, how long do they live? Oh, cattle will live. I don't know how many years they'll live. They'll live a long time. Like, yeah. they're a big animal. They live yeah. for a while. Uh, but the prime age that we try to get them at is between one to two years. So no anywhere, from, anywhere from, like, it's like 16 to 30 months mm. up to that anything over 30 months uh is a wholly totally separate program that we run oh, no um way. i can get into that you, you guys remember that uh, that mad cow scare that we had like years and years and years ago mm -hmm. where some yep. animal had mad cow disease yeah yeah and well it was an animal that was identified as being over the age of 30 months old so now we have a program that segregates cattle that are over that that threshold of age mm -hmm. and we segregate and again it's for that concern we want to make sure that we're not we're not mixing cattle that are that age or older with our younger cattle. Mm. So it's not that they don't have the disease, but it's a precautionary measure. We want to make sure that in case things do go south, we got it covered. Yeah. We got protocols in place. It's a very serious program, um, and it could impact our business very, very largely. So we, mm. we, have to make, we have to take serious measures to make sure that these cattle are identified, segregated, so that we don't have it mixing with our regular stuff. And uh, so anyway, so back to the farmers. Uh, so right now they're in a bind because they have – too much cattle on the farms, and they're they're struggling to get rid of them because, well, the U.S. is not buying them right now. Yeah. So what we're doing is strategically as a business, we're saying, okay, we're going to help our producers out. We're going to keep buying, and we're going to we're going to overkill right now because when you think about it, if they're losing, if our producers are losing money, what's stopping a farmer from saying, you know what, there's no money in cattle. Chickens. Once they sell all their cattle, I'm going to buy a pig or a chicken. Yeah. That's right. So we're trying to help our producers out by saying, hey, we're going to keep you guys thriving, keep your business going so that long term, mm -hmm. we still have a business. That's why you're working overtime. Yeah. Too. So we're trying to help them out. Plus, we have hey, we have the buyers for our product, too. Like, we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're it's going out the door just as fast as it's coming in. So, yeah. um, and that's the one beautiful thing about working in the food industry is, you know, it's not a dying business. Food in the food industry is not going anywhere anytime soon. People you, are always going to eat food. You haven't seen like the trend of veganism affecting the cattle going out. No, not really. Yeah, well, I, I, that would be like a. I don't. You probably would see that more on like a grocery store kind of like, uh, I guess list. You they could. I maybe... find people will buy what's cheapest. <laughs> yeah. Oh hell yeah. I mean, when you think about food, like yeah, people are going to eat meat, but they're going to buy what's cheaper. Look at pork. Pork is cheap. Mm. I eat. I eat a lot of pork too. Mm. Chicken's a little more expensive. Beef is actually quite expensive right now. Yeah. Um, I don't eat a lot of beef right now, I'll be quite honest. Um, only because it's more expensive. So I tend to go to those other protein groups because they're cheaper. And I got four kids. Yeah. If I was a single guy, yeah, I'd be eating strip loin every night, bro. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, bro? <laughs> Want to come over some strips? <laughs> no, I got kids, man. Yeah. I have it on the weekends now, and then I'm strictly just fish and salad during the week. Fish. Fish. Wing, man. Fish. Yeah. Fish. 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 Where'd that come from? <laughs> I like my fish. I like, I like my fish. You're a man, not a fish. I like my fish. 
<laughs> fucking jerk. So yeah. Oh, so wow. anyway, um, so let's get into some video games here. What Dude. do you guys? What are you guys? What are you guys jamming right now? Art is not playing any video games. I play NHL 14. Of course. On you my do. PlayStation 3. PlayStation 3 still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, because I don't have time for video games. Wow. So I'm not gonna lie. I think that console is older than your beard. Yeah, pretty much is. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much is. I'm playing um, Assassin's Creed uh, Origins right now. Nice. Yeah, I've been I'm, jamming the Black Ops 4, baby. I've yeah. been all over that. I play online I've with my stepbrother. I've seen some of your videos on Facebook. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Facebook. I post those videos. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. I watch you them. Do? I've been posting videos I on my Facebook, them. man. Oh, on Facebook. Of, of me annihilating. You, you should never, get a YouTube account. I have one, but I don't I have YouTube. Yeah, but what? you should put them on YouTube so they're more yeah. accessible to people. Well, I just put them in. I just I, when I upload, them, I have one video on YouTube that I've uploaded recently, and I just put it in the public channel. Like you should upload it. But on... I don't. What I don't do is because I do all my video editing right on my console. Mm. I don't have a computer to do editing software. Oh. To to edit these. Yeah, videos. but you could probably post right to YouTube. Can you upload from there? Can you not? From there? Oh yeah, for my console. Yeah, like I have an it. I have an editing program right on the console, and yeah. I do all my editing right there. On... And then it's probably got a, a button. And then I just, just upload hit... it to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, whatever I want. Just so people know, John and I have literally been playing video games. Like, we played it every day. Every day from probably grade 6 till grade 12. Yeah. We played games all the time. We would, like, that was something we did every day. We Let's played video say, games. And we put it on, Perfect like, Dark. Yeah. I think I had almost 50,000 kills yeah. in Perfect Dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah just do, you, like, do you remember when we got that second TV? So come Navy Seals. Dude, remember when my stepbrother came over with it? And yes. we had three TVs yeah. going? Three TVs oh, going. shit. Sorry. Oh, it's still right. hooked up. The cord. So we have three TVs going, three systems going, yeah. all on the internet. That was on PS2. SOCOM, Navy SEALs, yep. PlayStation 2. We all have headsets on. Nerd. We didn't even need headsets. We were just talking to <laughs> <laughs> We're about, all in the same room. We were just looking at each other. So we were camping out together all oh, in the same dude. room. We were I remember like, SOCOM. That was, the first, that was the first shooter game that went online, and it was it yeah. was popular, man. Yeah. Like, Oh, yeah. The, when I look back on it, like the graphics sucked. Oh, the yeah. games, it's it was a it was crappy really game. crawling. Crawling was like weird. And oh like, yeah, it was third person, and I couldn't do that now. Like I don't like third person. I prefer FPS. Yeah. Uh, yeah. First person shooter. People yeah. Don't know. Man. Yeah. First first person. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, no, like um, I got out of it. I was playing Titanfall two for a while. Great game. Never I love playing it. that online. It's very futuristic. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever played it, but uh, nope. It's basically remember how we used to talk about when we started playing like Call of Duty and stuff like that. I'm like, or back in the day, like remember? Oh man, they should come up with like mech warriors and robots that come down. And, like you can jump in the robots and yeah, fire. Yeah. Like, that's what Titanfall Two is. Oh no way! It's a first person shooter, and you can like you run around. It's just like Call of Duty game style. You're in gameplay. like a Star Wars Star. No, Star you start Trek, out. You're uh, a dude. Uh, you're a dude. Goliath? With a gun. Yeah, that's just what I was gonna say. You you start out as a dude. You got a gun. There's like wall running and stuff, and you can. There's different characters. One guy is like his special ability is like cloaking, and another special ability is like a grappling hook. So you could like Spider Man around the map, and then when you get points, when you get kills, and your team gets kills, you accumulate these points, and then once you get enough points, this thing goes off. It's like oh, your Titan's ready. And then you just hit a button, and literally a gigantic mech from outer space comes crashing down through the atmosphere, and Superman lands on the ground, just like it's got a shield dome around it, and you can like run up to it, and then you jump in, the chest opens up, you climb inside, it closes up, and then now you're in the robot. No and way. And you can run around, like like lighting guys up. It's and that was everything I've always wanted in a video game. It was like this yeah. is amazing. Um, unfortunately, Titanfall 2 came out right around the same time as. Uh, Modern Black Warfare 4. Oh, yeah. And so it didn't get the popularity that Call of Duty had because Call of Duty is a, has a giant game. They have a huge platform, right? Yeah, like their, their their fan base is so massive that Titanfall Call took not even a second-place seat because yeah. they, they took like a third-place seat. And they yeah. didn't get the attention that they were hoping to get, but it was a great game. It really is. Mm -hmm. And they just actually came out with a new game called Apex Legends. I don't know if you've heard of that yet. Nope. And it's from the same, produ the same makers as Titanfall 2, uh, which is Respawn Entertainment. And they just came out with a new game, just released literally like three days ago. And it's called Apex Legends, and it's like uh, it's a it's a battle royale style game, and it's basically there's but there's no like titans or anything like that, no robots, and it's but it's battle royale, and uh, it's almost kind of like a Fortnite, except mm. it's it's kind of cartoony, but it's a first person shooter, and it's actually a pretty mm -hmm. game. I haven't played it yet, but do you uh, play Fortnite? Looking forward to it. No, my kids play it. Yeah. Are you so you're a PlayStation guy though, right? Yeah. Did you ever get the one with the wands? No, I never, I never. Let me the, tell you, it's. I I came to your house the one time. Right? We played at the, the apartment. Yeah, we played the archery. We played the yeah, prison yeah, yeah. golf. Yeah, we did it all sucked. that. Yeah. Other than other than those games, which were fun, 
the uh, I tried. I got a first person shooter. I got actually SOCOM for it for that oh, one. Nice. It's terrible. Mm. Terrible. Nice. The reaction rate was was sucked. Was terrible. I, yeah. I even bought a game just for that move, and it was it was dog shit. It was terrible. I can't even think of the name of the game. It was just horrible. It was like a mag or something like that. Not bad, eh? Oh, it was terrible. Man. Yeah. Even to this day, like I remember the first game I was really good at was uh, Splinter Cell. Remember when I started I playing that? I remember you playing that yeah, game. Yeah. You were right into it. I loved it. And so ever since then, those are the only games I like to play. I play like games where you're like a person involved in an atmosphere where you're like a third part. You're in third person view and you're Stealth. running around. So like. I love Assassin's Creed. I've played them all, all the way from the beginning. First what's game, that, second one, what's that fucking boring game you had on the other night? That one was like Skyrim. It was like Skyrim. You play that too, eh? Yep. It's I like, like if, if uh, Game of Thrones mm-hmm. sucked, that'd be the game. No, no, no. Skyrim's a great game. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> It's like a giant You guys watch world. Game of Thrones? I don't watch it. What? You don't watch Game of Thrones? What? I haven't watched it. I watched... I literally watched the first we episode. Got a, we got a wow. fucking unicorn sitting yeah, across from us. You've never watched Game of Thrones? I before. watched the first episode. I couldn't get past it because it's dry. And I had... You know, how a lot of dude, shows start out really dry. Dude. It takes you a few episodes to get watch into it. it. Dragon I know. tits. Dude, I saw the preview for the final season. And it looked amazing. I was like, wow, this show looks so episode. good. Yeah, yeah. But I had, I've had, i never made it past that Every first episode. Every single character on that show could have their own show. Yeah. That's, yeah. How, good That's, it That's how good it is. That's how good it is. Wow. Good but I, w- I was the same way with, with Sons of Anarchy. I hated the first episode. I, w- I think, I don't know if it was you or who it was. Somebody told me about it. They're like, check this show out. It's great. Nope. I watched the first dry. episode. I, I was so like, dry. what the fuck is this? Like, it's hard. What do you watch then? Right now, uh, well, I'm not really watching anything. I've been jamming Black Ops a lot. I, I play with my stepbrother and a bunch of other people. You still talk to your stepbrother, right? Eh? Uh, yeah, Justin. Josh? No, Justin? Justin. I was talking to Josh, but I play with Justin. Mm. Um, actually, you know what? This is a funny thing because uh, I actually recently started getting in contact with my dad again. And uh, I didn't know that you weren't talking to your dad. Yeah, it's, uh, it was about 10. I didn't talk to him for 10 years. And I think it was, uh, what was it, maybe maybe six months ago. Um I decided that, you know. Okay, because he wasn't at your wedding. No, he was not. I didn't invite him. And oh, uh, last time I saw him was at my sister's wedding in 2010. And literally, maybe. So he even... hasn't even met um, your son? No. He has no idea. He's Jude. seen pictures of him. He's never met Jude? No, he's never met, he's never met my son. He's never met my wife. never met any of my kids. And he's never met any of uh, my sister's kids. My sister has three kids, Stephanie. Oh, no way. She has three kids, and it's oh, just man. two boys and a girl, yeah. And he's never met any of those either. So anyway, so about, I'd say maybe a little less than six months ago, uh, I made the decision. I said, you know what? I'm just, I'm going to go. Didn't call him. I just showed up on his front door. Knocked, no way. Knocked on his door. Yep. And I just walked you, in. Can we, can we preface this? Is, do you want to talk about your dad, like, initially, why you didn't talk to your dad for years? All right. Well, uh, get, I don't know. We you can don't get into to, that a listen, little bit. You don't I guess. have to. Just no. Like, you he, just say no. I got a rough. I got a, had a rough history with my dad. He was not. He was. He was. He was not a father. He wasn't a father. He wasn't there. He if wasn't, you don't want to get into it, totally no. Cool. We don't have to get into it. I don't mind yeah. talking about it. Hey. Okay. I'm over it. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why I went to see him. Yeah. Is because you know what, um, and the and when I saw him, you know, I the first thing I said to him, I said, listen, one of the reasons why I came to see you is because, and and it's funny because my whole life. I've been told who he is as a person. I've never was able to actually judge him myself of yeah, who from your, I from actually thought he was yeah. from my perspective. I was, you know, my family told him, oh, he's a jerk, he's this, he's that. You know, my, my family told me that this is who he is. And that's what I was led to believe for so many like years. Like your mom and your yeah, stepdad. Yeah, my mom and stepdad, my grandparents, my sisters, they told me this is who your dad is. And I never actually had based my own thoughts and opinions on who he is. Yeah. So I said, you know what? Screw it. That's what I'm going to do. So I went up and saw him, and I, and I told him that. I he said, showed up. What did he say? It was funny because he, he, he acted like he wasn't surprised to see me, but he was. He knew he was surprised to see me. And uh, we had a good conversation. Uh, I, I asked him, and I said, listen, I need to know your side of the story. I've heard my from mother. Right from the beginning, like that yep. initial? The whole, from the beginning, yep. yeah. I said, I've, I've heard my mother's side of it. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard that side. Yep. I need to hear your side. And he was like, all right. What did he say? So he, we talked about it, and he said, you know, like, he, he had it rough. He had a rough life without, you know, without us. And, like, well, he went to, like, he, to say, can I say he went to jail? Uh, yeah, that was, that was, yeah, that was back in the, I don't think he doesn't do that stuff anymore. But, I mean, when you guys were kids, 
Oh yeah, in like the car. He, he went to jail for several. Do you reasons. mind talking about that? Like, uh, ah, whatever. I don't really care to talk about that stuff. It's that's that's neither here or there now. But for I mean, me. just to give premise to the people listening. Okay, so yeah, so like, yeah, he was an abusive guy, uh, very physical, and you know. Like, well, to get, he, like to get physical. The car thing with the lake. Oh, that thing. Oh, that that's a that's a memory burned into my brain. Out of your brain? No, it's burned into my brain. Well, I mean, it, like, I'll just, never forget just it. Just to give people premise about. Uh, so yeah, so I basically, uh, yeah. Long story short, he can't handle his liquor. Yeah. And uh, you know, he got pretty violent with some people and did some pretty nasty things. And uh, basically, we had to get out of there, and because he was he was going to hurt a lot of people. And uh, my mother being one of them. So we ended up, uh, I don't really know what came after that night. Don't really remember. Uh, but that was, the, that was the decision that my mother finally made to say, okay, I'm done. Well, when he took the car and drove it into the lake. With you. No, he didn't do that. Like, he was, that was, that was the pretense. Like, we got into the car. He put us in the car. But then my mother got us out yeah. before he could. Because, drove it into the lake. Yeah, that was a pretty crazy time. Buddy. But whatever, well, man. I remember when you first told me that. So, so anyway, yeah, that anyway. was a long time ago. So, I mean, like, and I even said to him, I said, uh, when I talked to him, I said, you know what? Like, my whole life I've been told who you are. I've never been yeah. able to figure out for myself who I think you are. I think that's an interesting thing that you say that because people say that to us all the time. And they, we, I feel like that the same way with everything. Anything people say, they're like, you should do this. You should check this out. This is what this is like. Oh, I don't like that. This is not what this is like. And I'm like, well, you know what? I actually haven't dealt with that from my own perspective. That's right. Let me let me have my that's own right. view. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I and that's what I did. And I uh, at the end of it, he told me his side of the story, and he had it. He had it pretty rough after them. They got divorced because paying child support for three kids back in the uh, the 90s and the 80s, well, it wasn't easy. And he was living at a motel's. And no like way. he was broke, like yeah. he was, he was in the gutter, and it sucked for him. He really had a rough time, and I think that's part of the reason why he disappeared, because he was just down and out. Like he mm-hmm. was, he just he couldn't do it. And I think, and you know, obviously, I don't think it had anything to do with not wanting to see us. It's just he was at a point in his life where, yep. he couldn't manage it anymore, mm-hmm. and he was just so like broke and like poverty stricken. Mentally, physically. I think, I think he did yeah. tell me at one point, like, he was living out of his car, or, like, he didn't even have a car. He was living on the streets, because he had no money. He, all of it was going to us for child support, because back then, back in the 90s, they would take a lot of money from your pay. Like, they would take over half. He was, They were taking over half his paycheck. Mm-hmm. Man. And he was working at Better Beef. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's how I actually got the job there. He got me the job there. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so I, I got to hear his side of things. And was he open and honest? Yeah, he was open and honest about it, and he told me how he how he felt about it, and then the fact that he regretted everything. He regretted everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he still doesn't like my mother because he told me a lot of things that, from his perspective, how she was when we were kids. There's always two sides of the street. That's eh? right. There's always yeah. two sides, and that's the thing I didn't I didn't know his side, so that's what I wanted to hear. And he yeah. he told me he he opened my eyes a little bit more about how my mother was to him back when they were together. And, yeah. How that contributed to his behavior yeah. uh, when we were children, because I have no recollection of that. And it put it in perspective. I mean, I love my mother. Don't get me wrong. But I could see where, yep. you know, how, how he was struggling, because my mother had my oldest sister when she was 16. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. imagine having a kid when you're that young. You're not even mature yet at that age. Mm-hmm. Not even close. You know what I mean? So for him to jump into a family at the age of, I think he was like 19. At that age, back oh, in the man. 80s. Imagine if we were 19. Back in kids. the early, back in the early 80s, like that's that's crazy, right? Yeah, and mm-hmm. they didn't have their life established yet. So, that's that's a that's a primary motivator for, for why he behaved the way he did because they just weren't mature. Yeah. And that's kind of what I got from his perspective is that you know like holy, you know my mother was young and you know what, hey, that's life. So I I heard him out and we talked and this and that and. Uh, I told him at the end of it, I said, listen, this is now your opportunity to start the life with me that you want. Man, and I, you're, I, bringing, you're bringing some heavy stuff, eh? Yeah, I, and that's what I told him. I said, this is it. Like, this is, this is your second chance. This is your second chance. And, I mean, at this point, like, we're, we're still not really talking. We're kind of, you know, listen, doing our own thing. This is dad's. That's, dads are like that. That's right. Yep. So, I mean, like, We're, whatever. I'm finding that out with my dad, too, right now. He's just, like, off doing his own thing. Mm-hmm. They, that's just what dads do, I think. Mm-hmm. I think that's a normal thing. 
It's her dads just to kind of go off and do their own thing. It's not like mothers who are constantly texting you every god. day. Oh my god! You know what I mean? My wife so, with her with the, with our kids, it's it's just a hoverboard. And I tell her, yeah, like, yeah. like, leave the kids alone. Like, yeah, like, it's that's a unfortunately, but fortunately, it's for dads. There's a thing where they just bail out for a bit. Yeah, we're just we're nonchalant. We well, it's natural. Guys don't care as much as women care. You know, yeah. in that sort of sense. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, guys give a shit. We so, give a shit. Sorry, go ahead. Do you, do you see, though, like it is motivation, kind of, like with your kids dad. now? Because I'm going to tell you straight up, I'm just like, it ain't going to it ain't gonna be the same as, as what I dealt with. Because that's what I tell them, you know. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to let my two girls go through Absolutely. what I felt. Absolutely. Right? And, and actually, another – sorry, to, I'm going to come back to your oh. point. Yeah, yeah. But another main motivator that wanted me to go see him – was the fact that you know what and you guys can probably relate to this for sure is your the apple doesn't actually fall far from the tree mm. you're more like your father than you actually realize uh, uh, yeah there's characteristics you yeah. have yes yes that your father has that i and fight and, and that i fight every single day to avoid okay yep. now but i mean but yeah and that's i do the same thing but when you think about it there's things that you do and you're going yep. shit Oh, yeah, 100%. I'm, actually, I'm more like my father than I realized. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's one of the motivations that made me want to go see him is because, you know what, I'm, I'm more like you than I actually thought I was. Yep. And I want to figure out that connection. So, yeah, so back to your point. Yeah, every day I strive. Like one of my main principles is I'll never lay a finger on my wife or my kids. That's my number one rule. Yep. No mm-hmm. matter how – I don't care if my wife hits me in the face with a baseball bat. She's not going to get touched. And that's because that's how I grew up in that violent type of nature. And that's not what I want for my kids. Yeah. I mean, it's, it'll never happen. I mean, so, yeah. So, man, a good self perspective. Like, yeah. It's, and it's, it's we're, well, yeah. we're getting older, boys. We're yeah. getting older, guys. You and yeah. yeah. When you know, you know what's funny though. You say now you say that we're getting older now. It was funny because my mom was. We were in the the kitchen. It was a while ago before we. You and I haven't hung out for a long time. No, but I'm I think right. it was at uh, my mom's house when the last time we hung out. And it was funny because you were over at the house, and I don't know if Jeremy was there or not. But she's just like you and I were sitting at the table talking about because you had just had your son, and Chloe was not actually. I think your son was a year, and Chloe was just born. And you and I were having a conversation about diapers or something like that. And my, <laughs> my mom's like, in my wildest dreams, I could never imagine you and John talking about diapers for a, for a kid. I know, right? That's funny. Yeah. Life How's your mom kind of, doing anyway, guys? She's great. Good. She's good. Good. Yeah, still working great. at the hospital? She yeah. still works at Cambridge. Yeah. yeah. Wow, good for her. Yeah, she, she retired from Guelph, but she still works at Cambridge. Oh, she yeah. retired from Guelph. And I know, and, uh, how's Nelson? She's fine. Doing good. Okay. Doing good. Still, still putting around. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, there's something to be said about father figures. And there's something to be said about as you're growing up and certain things. So when I was still living at home, I, like, so I went to school. And you went to school? Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> so when I went to university, lived on when he was I enrolled know, in I school. I don't know if you even know any of these stories. Like we kind of like lost touch for around that time I started going to school. We just kind yeah, of got that's busy. right. We had a. It wasn't really a falling no, 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 out. No, no, it was just no. kind of. No, you no, know, we just got busy, man. We we just kind of went our own direction because I took. You know what? It was right around the same time I took my fifth year in high school. You yeah. guys finished. I took a. I took a fifth year. And I just started Did you have up. to take a fifth year? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. We didn't do anything in high school. I had to take you, a fifth year, you, man. I was not I was not a good kid in school. I didn't do very well, but uh, Whatever, man. I got through it. Whatever. So. But yeah. um, I it was that fifth year I took and I, I had, started hanging out with some new people and that's yeah, when yeah. we started having that bit of a falling out. Yeah, yeah. not just, like a falling out. It wasn't like, a falling out, it was just more blood. I started hanging out with different people yeah. and then we got yeah, busy. We just kinda got our own way. So ways. like so you went back to your fifth so you went back yeah, you went you were smoking weed for longer than that. No, I didn't. I didn't start smoking until I was eighteen. Yeah, no. You you were like. Oh, did you guys? Did you guys do the? You guys smoke your first joint? Ernie did. I did. You did. I did. Adam boy. Yep. And I freaked out. Hang you freaked out. Oh yeah. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm sitting here going, Jeremy, don't leave. Jeremy, don't, don't leave me. Because he's because the mother he he lied to me. He's like, oh, it's it's gonna be similar to getting drunk. No, it was not. No, it's not. No, it was not. It's totally not. 
And he was just like he he when I was talking to him afterwards, and he's just like I don't I don't know how I was gonna explain it to you. <laughs> he's like so, but I'm sitting. The problem was, and I, from everybody that I've talked to that's listened to the podcast, they're like, "How much did you smoke?" And I'm like, "I think I did a lot of that big joint." <laughs> <laughs> so because I take one, and they're like, and you blow it out, and you're, and I'm like, I don't feel anything. Oh yeah, it takes, and they're like, it takes, by the time you're done the joint, yeah, and it was big. Yeah, it was a bazooka. First time I ever got high, I actually didn't. Or the first time I smoked a joint, I never actually didn't get high. And some I've people heard that like before. Some too. people I've don't actually get high, and it's because you're. I guess you don't. You don't recognize it. You are high, but you don't realize it. Yeah. And it doesn't affect you. And I remember I was actually working at Silver City the first time I got high. Oh I yeah. Was, I was working, and uh, I smoked a joint with uh, Alex Fox, and uh, we were on break, and I went back and I was working on concession, and he kept looking. He was like. How you doing over there, buddy? How you feeling? I'm just like, I'm fine. Like, I don't feel anything. Like, nothing. And he's like, he kept looking at me like, what's wrong with you? Like, why aren't you stoned? And Silver City. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, that was the first time I ever got high. And then I didn't even get high. But after that, yeah, I actually, when I started smoking, I got high from it. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, like, I actually, it's funny. Everybody reacts a little bit differently with weed. Like, I know a couple of guys who... Literally, they can't smoke weed because they shut down. They can't do anything. With me, I find I can smoke a joint. I can go to the gym. I can go golfing. I get I get more energy and I get motivated to do things when I'm high. Uh, and that's one of the things. Like I've gone to the gym high several times, oh, and yeah. I get a good workout in. And I'm because I'm like I'm high. I'm like, oh yeah, I've never told you I've smoked weed too. You did. I've uh, eaten I've eaten edibles. I I, I made brownies once. So and they're bomb. I got frustrated. I'm gonna tell you because I was sitting here. He, didn't, he lost control. I he didn't like the feeling of but it. But I couldn't uh, keep up, and it was frustrating because we're doing a podcast, and I'm like, I'm an idiot. Like I'm sitting here, yeah, and, I, and I'm dude. like, we, we were talking about how many days off in the year we get for work, was, and I'm like, did you hear that I podcast? get like ten, like sixteen plus or five, like eight and minus two. the two. And I'm like, <laughs> you, I don't you, were, you, were, you were done. I don't even remember what I was talking That's about. That's the thing. Like, it affects everybody differently, right? So, yeah. like... And the next day, I was depressed. <laughs> I'm not even lying, man. I, I It was weird, but I really was. I had an event, and I, I went to the event, and I was just like, I don't even care if they cancel today. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even care. Cancel the thing. Burn the building down for all I care. That's all mental, though, you know. I don't know. I was tired. I was it's really, his really... It's all his head. Yeah, but I didn't... Wasn't... I wasn't, wasn't happy. Was it? No, no, I wasn't no, happy. It was pretty strong, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't. I was really, really mad. How the next we, day. So anyway, we were gonna talk about. We were talking about Nelson, right? No, we were talking about video games. <laughs> yeah, but then we moved in. And I was telling my story about school. Yeah, you I were talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. So kind of, we just. Anyway, Ernie got high and it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're high so, right now. I don't you, know what you're talking about. <laughs> you took a fifth year at, at high school. Yes. At Preston. Mm -hmm. Did you graduate from Preston? Hell yeah. I didn't. I did not. <laughs> Get out of here. No. So here's the <coughs> here's the funny thing. I got all my courses in at Preston High School for a regular school year. I did not hand in my community service hours at Preston High School. Ah, <laughs> oh, you idiot. But, but he I still had passed. them done. Had them done. So then I went back to school because I had to get my university courses right to yep. go. Yep, yep, yep. Can so, I can I stop you for a sec? How did you pass with your? Uh... <laughs> Bangus I went. Teacher. I, I so in my last year of high school, I did I did co-op right. Yep. And so did Ernie. Ernie also did co-op. So yes, we it did. So I got my co-op hours in, got them all signed appropriately and everything. And Ernie Ernie helped me uh, hand them in and stuff because I was not around as much as I could have. So <laughs> Ernie was my dryad. Okay. To hey God. Hey God. So anyway, got all my hours in regular for Preston. And so I went back to school. I handed in my community service hours to Jacob Hesler. Yeah. Because they're like, you haven't even really graduated from school. So I handed them in. I did a couple courses at Jacob. I actually did a couple courses at uh, Coronation for night school. I went to day school, night school, summer school that year. So I handed in my community service. My diploma for high school says Jacob Hesler secondary school. Really? Yeah, it does. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because I didn't even go there. I still remember that one time you fucking took my backpack. Oh, my God. <laughs> that actually was hilarious. Oh, yeah. No, you were pissed. I you was, was pissed because all my first... books were there. And I that went was... all the, to all my classes without a backpack. That was the first time I, I think was... you and I ever I got... I sat there with nothing. As my... friends, you were the first time 
the first time as right. friends we ever got like into like like we were pissed at each other. Oh yeah. So was so, that when you guys went upstairs? That's when I smacked him in the face. That and was then upstairs. You, I mean, you're like, and I was just like, you said, Fuck. pick on someone your own size. I remember that. Yeah. So let's, yeah. remember, let's remember this story. So I would get, we, hug, we hugged it I out after. Get, that was after get, we broke the wall. In my in my in my twelfth year, I had afternoons off. I didn't have to go to school because I, I had enough courses. So at lunch times, I could just leave. And so John and I were screwing around around lunch. We were playing hacky sack like we always did. Fucking right. And John always left his backpack on the ground. And I was like, like, F you, John. I'm taking your backpack. <laughs> John was like, hey, it. get back here. I thought you were fucking around, but you fucking I, took it. I, you actually <laughs> took my backpack and left with it. You I took left. it all the way home. <laughs> yeah. That's a 45-minute walk. Yeah, I took a 45-minute walk. From, walked home. From Preston? Took it. Yeah. <laughs> Took all his, the way back to your house. Took his backpack. I went, I went oh my all my classes in the afternoon. I had no books. Nothing. <laughs> I went to class with nothing. Oh my and my God. teacher would look at me like, where's your books? And I'm like, my buddy took my backpack. Link, <laughs> link, John wait, came over to my house. Pissed. Oh, he yeah. Was, I was so he mad. Was fuming. Remember when fucking Goldrick smacked my wallet out of my hand? All my fucking change went oh, everywhere. Let me finish the story. Change boy. Let me finish the yeah, story. Finish the Before story, we talk finish. about Adam Goldrick. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a whole other baked beans oh, can. Yeah. So anyway, John comes over super pissed. He's freaking out. I'm like, relax. I didn't take him seriously. I took a cup of water and I threw it in his face. Oh yeah, I remember that. And he was, fu- he was pissed. I'm like, listen, man. I was just joking around. I didn't know how pissed you were. Oh, yeah. And then you went, you were, and then Ernie's like, what the hell's going on up here? Get the hell out of here. Mm. You went home, like, two hours later. I'm like, listen, I'm sorry. You're like, I oh, don't worry about it. It's all cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You got over shit came quick. Over. Oh, yeah. Adam Goldrick. No, let's not talk about him. Oh, That's not God. even bothering right? Not all worth right. it. Nah. All right. Anyway. Talk about you know what so, I, you know what I'd like to talk about? You know anyway. what I'd like to talk so, about? hang on. I'm still finishing. So, oh, yeah. we were talking about, like, we were talking about folly figures in Nelson. And I just started talking about this random story. Okay. Anyway, got all my courses. I went, went to Bible college. After my first year, um, I didn't want to move home because mom and I were on the outs. My mom yeah. and I were on the outs. Uh, when that, that summer before I left, we had the parties and stuff, oh and then the hot God, dog the broke parties. down, and it wasn't even a real breakdown, like, it was, wow. like, an energy thing. I remember that. We went, golf. I just we went golfing. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I walk, got home, and mom threw all my stuff out in the front lawn. Oh, yeah, and kicked me you out were of the golfing house. when that happened. So she kicked me out of the house, and I didn't really have any place to live at the time, so I went to school, first year, finished it, and I didn't have anywhere to live. Lived in my car. You actually lived in your car? Lived in my car from April till, uh, I'm going to say, October, November, going into my second semester of school. And then I, then I was talking to Chad Davidson, and his mom was like, listen, I know you don't have a place to stay, uh, and it's getting the wintertime. I don't want you sleeping in your car. Mind you, this was the decision I made to sleep. I don't want to go home. So then I rented a room. <coughs> Went to the room from Chad's mom and stuff, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so then I had so after my so during this time and stuff, I started. I met Joss, my wife. Yep. And I uh, was like, I can't be like living in like this weird room, yeah, in Chad's like, place, and living in my car. That, so I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna move home, save some money up, start saving some money because paying rent. Uh, so I moved home, and then a couple months later, mom's boyfriend Nelson moved in, and we just did not get along. Oh really? Right the bat. He was just like. He was a weird dude. He didn't want me living there. Didn't want Ernie living there. He wanted. He just wanted us out. And well, you were in your twenties by then, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, was, I, I should have been that. moved out anyway. And so Joss and I were already. I was working full time, saving money. I was just kind of like going to school part time online. So I'm like, I got to figure something out. It wasn't a good place to live. So my dad finally stood up <laughs> for the first time in my relationship with my dad wow. and said hey you want to move you want to live here actually his wife did not him but they figured it out I don't, whatever it doesn't matter they obviously me. discussed it no 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 so and i so so moved out <laughs> moved <laughs> <laughs> moved, moved out because no. Nelson and I didn't get along. We get along now more than we did back then, but he's still like a weird dude. I wouldn't live with him ever again. We would not get along. No way. No, no oh, way. That's interesting. No way. He, he's good for my mom. Great for my mom. Yep. Loves my mom. Yep. They are that's, perfect together. That, and that's what's important I right can't. Now. Yep. I, I couldn't live there again. Uh, yeah, I'd live in my car before I'd move back <laughs> there again. Yeah. No. Long story short. Long story short. Um, what was I want to talk about? Oh. Let's change. Let's change the subject a little bit here. Let's talk about the Super Bowl. Hang on, hang on. Before we do this, oh, we, were on. About, we were talking right, about right, parties. Right. Parties, okay, fine. So 
The, oh my, yeah, my, put that toy away, son. Let's talk about the, that. Oh, you were talking about that Put that toy away. With Brian Manger? Away. So here's, hang on, let me tell you my aspect from it, okay? Well, All right. Actually, go ahead, go ahead, should, go ahead. People should premise, I would have parties at my house. Like, I was the guy in Cambridge who would have, like... 30 people over? Uh, more more of that. 30. We would have yeah. giant parties. That rugby one was huge. So we had a, that was a We had a couple party, parties. Man. Like, one of our biggest parties we had, we, re- we threw a kegger. We had three kegs, and we charged people $10 a head. I remember, and probably, I remember waking up the next morning, rummaging through coolers and getting drinking and for, at 9 in the morning. For that many people was probably the most tame house so, party anybody's so probably we, ever had. So wow. this wasn't this this was this incident we're gonna be talking about it didn't happen at that kegger, but we had parties and stuff all the time and people came over. So we had through a giant house party. I invited a bunch of people and so this one guy, uh, named Ryan, invited these three guys that I had never met before. So premise this, every single guy at that party we knew each other. Maybe been like maybe thirty people. We were all buddies. We all went to high school together. We were bros. That was we, before we were smoking weed. Yeah. Well, I didn't smoke weed. I drank. Or I was smoking I drank. weed anyway. I drank. Yeah, so, so did I. we had a giant party, and we were all friends. Everybody at this party was friends. It wasn't like we were nobody. Mm-hmm. So these guys showed up, and we're like, who are these guys? And my a buddy Ryan vouched for him and said, hey, these guys are cool. So I was dating this girl at the time, taking care of her because she was really needy <coughs> and, and retard, uh, weird. And yeah, so I know what you're talking about. So we're all hanging out and these three guys start walking around trying to like sell weed and like start causing stuff and one of our buddies Brian uh, who's an amazing guy he you know he's our only like guy, really friend that we had that time that was colored uh, so like we're all buddies and these people didn't know that we're all buddies and what did he say something like he threw down the he end dropped, yeah the one guy he dropped, dropped he, the end bomb he said what is this end person doing here no I don't think he said it directly to him but he I I forget what he said, but I know I remember him said that you dropped the end bomb, and that's what set Brian off. So at a table, sitting there was my buddy Brian and my buddy Cam, a oh, friend of Jesus. mine. So Cam was at this point, first year, went into the army. He's six foot, probably two hundred and sixty pounds. This giant sweetheart of a man, love that guy. He looks over and says, "What did you just say?" And the guy like. Said it. He repeated said, it he again. Re- yeah. He repeated it again. He repeated it again. Cam gets up, Golly. grabs this guy, throws him across the room, and then this starts this giant oh, mini yeah. fight in the house. And we're all yelling and screaming. And we so we had them backed up into a corner, and his friends are coming over. We gotta get out of this house. We gotta get out of here. And we're all like yelling at them. So this drunk guy's like, "I'll fight all of you guys." Yeah. Thirty guys. We're all yelling at the top of our lungs. Get out of the house. Yeah. And then I remember, so, I remember standing in the kitchen. So then here comes Ernie's side of the story. <laughs> While he was sleeping so, in the basement. I'm in the basement asleep with my, my now wife, I'll the then girlfriend. All right. I'll let you jump in after. So <laughs> Danielle's like, I think they're fighting up there. I went, no. I said, there's no way. I said, I know everybody that's up there. Nobody's going to be fighting. Yeah. And she's like, well, somebody's going to get beat up. I, I can hear it. So I'm like, I'm hearing nothing. Then I hear nothing. I'm hearing shuffling a little bit. And I hear, not hear the yelling. How did you not hear the yelling? I don't know because I'm right in the basement. Well, it I wasn't was loud much. already. Yeah, yeah. Be it was it player. was loud, but in the basement, anyway, really, sorry. you can't hear much. So anyway, Go ahead. so Danielle's like, "Listen, listen." I don't hear. I'm like, "Oh no!" I'm like, "But there's no way I know everybody that's up there." So I, all I'm wearing is my boxers, and I walk upstairs. I'm like, "No, no, no! You were not wearing boxers. You were wearing tidy whiteies." <laughs> was that really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even. I don't remember that. You were even wearing part. nice underwear. <laughs> So Ernie like comes up. <laughs> he's wearing tiny whitey underwear. He's got no shirt on. We're gonna he's edit that out, right? He's no, no, no. Anything. That's Keep fine. Anyway. Keep it. Tiny whites. I'm wearing underwear. Boxers. I can't remember what kind I had. He's still wearing underwear. So I come up and I'm like, "What the hell is going on?" And I can't remember who it was, but somebody was coming up the stairs. They're like, "Hey, man." And I said, "Hi. H- h- what's going on?" They're like, "This guy needs to leave, and he's not leaving." I said. Really? I feel like so. I walked I feel up. Like John was standing out to the side. Oh uh, no, no! No. So no, no. So anyway, finish anyway, your sorry, story and then I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'll walked up and I went, "Well, tell him to get out." They're like, "He's not leaving." I said, "Okay." So I walked over, I grab him around the waist, I threw him over my shoulder, I ran him out to the front door, and I said, "Get the f- out of here!" And he goes flying down the stairs. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah. I was yeah. the other guy. And so he's so he's running out. Uh, two people went past me and they're like, "Oh," because he went you flying know, down yeah, the stairs. Yeah, down the and stairs. all I, I saw was, him out. and there yeah. was a, there, we have a, a, um, 
uh, a motion light. So all of a sudden, as soon as as soon as the door opens up, that motion light goes out, and I saw about four people standing out there screaming at him. I threw him down. I went downstairs. And Danielle's like, "What happened?" I said, "I just threw somebody out." I said, "Everybody else seems cool." She's like, "Okay." So I went back to sleep. And then so so this is my side story. So I was in the kitchen too when this happened, and I heard the guy drop the end bomb. And I remember I looked over at Brian, and Cam was there too, just like. Ugh, ugh, ugh. And Brian Cam had him in the corner when and when Brian I was downstairs. Pulled out brass knuckles. Oh yeah. Brian had brass knuckles on. He pulled them out and I saw him put them on his hand. I was like, oh my god, this guy's got brass on. And this is the point in time when I carried a knife. And you came up the stairs, Ernie, and it was me you were talking to, and you're like, what the hell's going on? And I said to you, I said, I don't know. I said, all I'm doing is I'm waiting for one of these motherfuckers to come outside with me. And you looked at me and you're like, Okay, and you grabbed that guy, and you yeah. had your arm around his neck. You were pulling him out. I was pushing the same guy. <laughs> you were pulling him out while I was pushing him out, and then we threw him out. The, I remember you I had threw a hold him out the him. door. I yeah, I went down after him, and I remember I I cocked back to hit him, and you grabbed my arm. Well, before that, he pulled him. Wasn't that when? No, 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 that was after. So John, I went to cock this guy. And Jeremy grabbed my arm back, and he's looking at me. He's like, don't do it. It's not well, worth dude, it. Well, dude, you punch. And then I was like, all right, you're, like, you're let's right. Let's premise this. John can punch really hard. John's a hard puncher. Sorry. He okay. is like, okay. he you throws good. bombs. So John's like, I, did you, you hit him a couple times. No, I didn't because you grabbed so my arm. John pulls back, and John was cold cocked, ready to punch this guy in the face. I just cut my arm behind him. I'm like, dude, yeah. don't hit him, man. This is be this is gonna end bad. Yeah, I'm this like, is don't not hit good. him. And then another guy, one yes. of his buddies, he came out the right. door behind us, right? And he pulled a fucking blade and he out. He pulled a blade on us, and he all yeah, of a yeah. "Who's got beef now?" And he had this knife in his the hand, and I had a knife on me, so I pulled my knife out. Classic. I clicked mine out, and I say to him, "Like, put that fucking toy away." And he folds it up, puts it back in his pocket, puts his hands up, and I'm like, "Keep that fucking shit at home." And then the three guys left. After that, and we were we were cussing them, cursing them as they were walking. As they were walking away, and then yeah. we had a great time. After and then that. we had a great time after that. That was right. Yeah, yeah I remember that night. That yeah. was a great night. That yeah. was a lot that's of. The, that's well, the quote. Put that toy away, put son. Put that fucking toy away, son. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> I don't know why I carried a knife. What? But that I was did. the only time out of all the parties. Yeah, I threw, no, we've always had chill parties. parties. You guys had tons of parties. Besides, like you know, weird stuff like Adam Goldrick sitting on the roof doing things to people, but like. That was, we've always Remember had one Remember when parties. fucking Rory passed out and Goldrick was playing the guitar with the amp right next to his head? Yes. I <laughs> it was blasting it, and we're like, this guy's passed out. Like, what the fuck? He, it put, was, he, was he put the amp right beside his head, turned it, <laughs> turned it full blast. Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> started jamming he on back, the guitar. Like, and like, full blast. Oh, like, it was too good. <laughs> and he was, and he was, he was out, out cold, He was man. passed oh, out. Oh, that was a funny party. That was a good party. Oh, we always had good times. But, uh. All right. We yeah. Get, we yeah. 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 I had to tell that story. Yeah. That's no, that was that's a classic, oh. classic story, man. No, I'm glad you yeah. brought it up, actually. Um, but uh, I didn't remember that. I knew I had a hold of him, but I was just that was like, me. Yeah. I'm like, why isn't oh, he leaving? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I remember you came up. I don't remember the tidy whities but I, I remember you came up I and do. you looked at me and you're like, I was what like, the fuck's going on? Well, I'm like, I, I want one of these guys to come outside of me because I don't want to fight in your house. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm waiting for one of these guys. And you looked at me and you were like, okay. And you grabbed the guy just immediately and choked him, and you were pulling him out. And I had him from the front, and I was pushing while you were pulling. And I remember you fucking just hucking him down the stairs. He went down those stairs pretty well, quick. He, yeah, he landed pretty hard. And then he, I he jumped was, down after him. He got up, and I cold cocked, and he grabbed me. I was like, you're the I was going to destroy this guy. I know. It, was, it would have ended bad. So I was like, I'm not going to let John punch this guy in the Remember face. that one time we went to Moose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, you're yeah. thinking of that, are you? Yeah, oh, yeah. I remember that. You weren't there for that. So we went to the Moose Winooski's one time, and they had that punching machine yeah. where you put the button, the thing yep, comes down, yep, and you yep, hit. Yep, yep, yep. And I remember, like, we walk in, and I'm like, oh, they got a punching machine. That's awesome. And we were we had to wait because there was two more people. Like, yeah, yeah, so we well, we went and sat down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I looked at you guys. I'm like, I'm going to hit that punching machine. So we walk back out there, and there's these two, like, fairly big guys yeah. out there. And they had a little crowd of people. They probably had a good 20 people standing around watching these two awesome. monsters, like, bigger, like, way bigger than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were hitting this punching machine. And, like... They were hitting like 500, 600 on the thing. Yeah, and, we'll and I saw, I could tell by the way they were punching it, they weren't hitting it nearly as hard as, they weren't as I could. They their weight behind it. They weren't throwing their weight behind it. And they were doing that old uh, side punch. Like, it looked, their form was shit. 
And I remember, I walked up to them. I said, hey, guys, do you mind if I uh, punch in? They're like, I remember this. Yeah, go I, ahead, man. Go ahead, buddy. I remember this. And I remember I put my toonie in, and I walk back. I hit the button. I walk over to Jeremy, and I look him right in the face, and I'm like, check this out. Yeah. <laughs> and he looked at me, and I'm just like, I turn around, and I fucking triple nine it. 999 nine, 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 across nine, the nine, board. Nine. I had everybody in that area like, ooh, I saw people literally with their hands over their mouths going, oh my God. And, I destroyed yeah, yeah, the machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, Those big guys, gone. And then John just looks at me, let's go finish our beer. And we walk, <laughs> we walk back in the oh, restaurant. Yeah, I remember that. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. That, that was, was so that was cool. Good. You love those machines, punch those. Oh things. yeah, man. Because you just, you just kind of know how to throw a punch. Like, Actually, you're the, you told, remember you taught me how to punch? I did? Yeah. You remember you were like goofing around? You're like, dude, I'm going to show you how to punch. You're like, you got to throw your weight behind it. Yeah, if you throw your weight behind it, Oh, man. man. You got to think. Like, if you think about the, like, the Well, I took, I did it. boxing for six months, too. Like, yeah. uh, with, uh, I had trainers teaching me how to box and things like that at the gym. And yeah, but, man, you, you, you've you been fighting for years. You've been fighting people. No, well, and that's, again, apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Dude, you love to scrap. <laughs> No, nah, not as much anymore. Not now. But well, the thing is, it's like, well, when I was growing up, like, I didn't get in a lot of scraps. And one of the main reasons why I didn't like scrapping is because I was afraid of my own strength. You had a temper. I was afraid of, of yeah. really hurting people. I remember you were going to fight some and, guy, and, like, I was with you that one day. And they were like, we're going to go fight off the, on the path. Because, um, remember that? I think it was Brian was fighting some guy, and then the guys were going to jump in. You're like, you're not, no. This is a fight between the two of them. And then... Okay. Don't you remember that? No. And they I were don't. like, "Well, first blood, and then the fight's over." And then they wrestled on the ground. Yeah. Remember we were on that path, I, and then those other two guys were going to jump in. And they're like, "Yeah, we're not going to fight." And you're like, "You're not going to fight." I got me here, and then we got you got Jeremy here. And you're like, "No." You're not doing these, nothing. These guys yeah, are fighting. You're not doing nothing. Yeah. But like you were like at that point, you were just like getting in fights at those lacrosse games and stuff. And remember? Lacrosse games. Were you remember? No. Remember you went to your, your stepbrothers across games and stuff? Oh, and yeah. I remember so like, getting a few fights there. Yeah, I remember yeah. the one time I was at my stepbrothers, and there was a couple of guys doing some heavy, heavy drugs there. And this is – I was just like, I'm not putting up with this. And I remember I caught one guy in the bathroom sniffling up some stuff, and I just told him flat, I'm like, get the fuck out of this house. Like, that shit's yeah. not happening here. Get out. And he's all, oh, fuck you, man, this and that. And I said, you really want to do this? And I remember I fucking grabbed him by the collar, and I threw him out the fucking door. Yeah. And my stepbrother was all like, he knew the guy too. He's like, what are you doing to my buddy? He's like, what's going on? I'm like, this guy's in your, in your house doing this shit. And you know what? I don't appreciate it. Like, that's not happening. You want to do that? Go somewhere else. Yeah. And my stepbrother was kind of like, all right. Like, they didn't know yeah, it was yeah, that yeah, shit yeah. to me. But yeah, no, like, I, I, don't, I don't like fighting. And I never really did because I was afraid of my own strength. I really was. I, yeah. I've always had this conscious thing. Like, I know what I'm capable of. Yeah. And I don't want to do it. You've always had a hard line on drugs, on hard drugs. You've always been like, you've always been like, no, nah, man, I'm not going to do that. Nah, no, man. and I still do. Like, I've, I've, I've never experimented. Like, I've, I've done mushrooms. Well, mushrooms, yeah. it's, it's organic, whatever. Yeah. Mushrooms are great when you're out in a, like on a beach yeah. somewhere, like at a cottage, and you're just looking at the stars and stuff, do some mushroom tea yeah. and chill out, right? But, uh, but yeah, no, like, no. Just Remember the one time I was dating that girl, and you caught her cutting up that pill at a party, and you're like, dude... I'm like, you're like, dude, you got to get her out of here. She was cutting up that pill. You're like, what are you getting into? Knowing me, you were like, oh, yeah. You're like, man, you... I'm like, I didn't even know it. You're like, it's not good. And I had no idea. Also, yeah. I, was, I had no idea. Oh, you're probably on. drunk. Yeah, I just wanted to, yeah, just like, get out of <laughs> I just wanted a little tickle. You know, it's just, <laughs> like, whatever. We'll leave it at that. Uh, yeah, it was just. Did you guys, uh, did you guys watch Super Bowl? Yeah, I did. Yeah, Boring. Yeah. A little bit. It was a boring bit. game. Depends I, on who you were cheering. I missed the part. I'm I wanted a pass to see fan. the. I, I wanted to yeah. see the halftime yeah. show, and I missed I that. It. That was garbage too. Wasn't that's even what that I heard. great? I, I watched was it. Was it as bad as the Black Eyed Peas? No, no, was it was. Adam it was Levine. mediocre. I would say um, Adam Levine. It was a mediocre halftime show. It was okay. It was a good concert, but it wasn't like blowing your mind. Amazing, like wow, what a great halftime show. Was it only? Was it only Maroon Five? Or was no? There was a couple guest appearances, but like mostly. Cardi no. B, did you come no. up for that song? It was mostly nope. Maroon 5. Uh. It was that rapper. Yeah, there was, what's his Travis name? Travis Scott. Yeah, Travis Scott. No, that, Travis was a, that was a guess. I was yeah, like, like, yeah, it was yep. a guess. Yeah, it was Travis Scott. And, like, he was wearing this fucking mink coat with these shades on, like, balling out. And for some reason, and like, it was SpongeBob thing happened yeah, before that. Yeah, like, it was, was weird. I don't remember there. totally. But uh, I remember watching it, and it was garbage. But I fucking won... I won 650 bucks on that game. No way. No what yeah, uh, what no. team were you cheering for? I couldn't tell from your picture. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. My, my Tom Brady jersey. Yeah, I, yeah. Yo, I wore that jersey to work on Monday, 
And I had so many people going, oh, 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 oh. nobody <laughs> hates. Everyone hates the Pats, and I get it. Yeah. But I love. I like the Pats. Tom Brady's a great quarterback, man. He's one of the best quarterbacks of all time. Of all time, he yeah. really is. I don't care how much hated. Oh, he's a cheater. This and that. Yeah. So what? Yeah, he cheated one year, but you know what? He proves it time and time again. He doesn't actually need to cheat to win. Yeah. You know, he's won the Super Bowl two out of the last three years. Yep. And then last last year they lost against the Eagles. Yep. Yeah. But this year they fucking just. Well, I knew they were going to beat the Rams. The Rams should not have been there. The fucking Saints should have been there. They yeah. they got some bad calls in the in the uh, semifinals. Yeah, I haven't been watching any, but that's what I heard. I actually but, heard uh, there was a lot yeah, of no, bad officiating. I, my buddy, he uh, he he won quite a bit of money on the Super Bowl. Yeah. And he yeah he won about thirty five hundred bucks. Whoa. And he told me I had a hundred bucks and I was going to put it down for the Pats to win. He's like, no, it's like, put them down to win between seven to twelve points. They won by 10. Yeah. So if I won, if they, if the Pats won anywhere between seven to 12 points, my hundred dollars turned into 650 and I won. And I was like, boom. Did you leave screaming? Oh yeah. I was like, ba boom, ba boom. After Huge they win. got that touchdown, you're like, and then they got sealed the deal. With yeah. The when, uh, I forget his name now, but, uh, yeah, he got that touchdown. Sony. Yeah. He got that touchdown. And then I was just like, all right, we're up by seven. We just need a field it was goal. 13, three, 13, three. Yeah. And, uh, it was a boring game. They both the Offensively defensive. wasn't strong, yeah, but defensively, defensively they yeah. were on point. Yeah, Both yeah, teams were good yeah. defensively, and yeah. that's that's what makes a boring game when the defense is hot. Yeah, no one's is that points. is that how they yeah. played all year though? Is something like that? Well, the Pats' defense is actually the the Pats' defense is not that good. They they struggle, and it's literally they're an offensive team. The yeah. Patriots are a very offensive team, just like Kansas City. Like Patrick Mahomes this year played amazing. He had an amazing season for a rookie. I thought he was going to win. I thought he was going to take that Super Bowl this year because yeah. just the way he played, like. If he continues to do that, he's going to shatter records over hmm. his career. And who's he play for? Sorry, Kansas City Chiefs. I don't follow football, so yeah, yeah no, I, I've been follow. I follow. I've been following football for about the last five years. Yeah, and uh, yeah, man, like uh, I thought Kansas City was going to win, but then when they went, they went to the semifinals, and it was the Pats versus Kansas City. Yeah, and yeah. the KC was favored to win, and sure enough, the Pats came out on top, and uh, they went to the Super Bowl, and I was like, but then, and then it was uh, this. Um, the uh, the Saints, New Orleans Saints, they were against the uh, the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah. Saints were favored to w- or yeah, the Saints were favored to win, and uh, they got a couple bad calls in there, and the Rams ended up taking it, mm. and they went to the Super Bowl, and like I said to my buddy, right, I'm like the Saints, they the Rams should not be here. The Saints should have won that game. Yeah, they're not gonna beat the Patriots because the Patriots won. They won a good game. Now, mind you, they they had a bad call against Brady. They called it roughing the quarterback. And the one guy, the one blocker, barely touched Tom Brady, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that was a bad call. But they called it anyway, and I was kind of like, whatever, that's that's in my favor, so I'm not gonna argue that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, th- I mean, but overall, Tom Brady's a great quarterback, and uh, and uh, yeah, they ended up playing the Rams, and I knew right away. I'm like, they're gonna win. The Pats mm-hmm. are gonna win again. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 their year again. They're gonna do yep. it. I thought for sure Tom Brady was gonna retire after this season. Well, yeah, is he not retired? No, he uh, he's gonna keep going. He's going to next season. What? Guy's forty one years old. Yeah, I know. He's like one of the oldest quarterbacks. Right? Yeah. He's one yeah, he's up yeah. there. He's getting yeah. old now. So yeah, no, what a great season though, man. Uh yeah, I had a really good season with football this year and I'm looking forward to next year for sure. But uh That's he, cool that you're in football now. Yeah, I've been watching that for yeah, mm. quite a few years. My buddy got me into it. Mm. And uh yeah, I just follow it's a, it's such a great game. It's very strategic. It's a strategic yeah. type game. It's well, it's play to play, right? Every play is it means something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah. Speaking of which, since we're on the topic of football, let's talk about some NFL Blitz. Oh, my God. Oh, oh the Blitz. Shit. That was a good oh. game. I loved that game. Yeah, actually. we used to jam yeah. that game. And then after the play was over, we just we used to fuck the guys up. That <laughs> used to be the after. That's we a great game. Body slamming guys. Yeah. That was a yeah. great game. I, I still, game. to this day, couldn't even tell you what all the buttons did. Nintendo I just, 64. No. Button magic. Yeah, I yeah. love that game. That was a, that was probably my yep. favorite sports game I've ever played. Yeah, yeah. NFL Blitz. Yeah. It was so fun it to was play. It WCW. Man. We played WCW quite a bit, No, but too. I mean, like, at football games, oh, football, I yeah. love NFL Blitz. Yeah, yeah oh. it's such a good game. I'm going to see if I can get it again. I still have a 64. You do? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, man. Get yourself a perfect I'll dark. I'll try and find I'll, it. I'll come I, over more often. Dude, I got perfect dark. Well, as soon as this is over, we're going to jam Let's it. jam it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll totally jam it up. Are you, uh, are you in the UFC right now? UFC? No, I haven't really been following it. No, I haven't been watching it. Do you watch MMA at all? No. 
No. no. I I watched some highlight reels of like some sick knockouts yeah, and yeah. stuff like that, but in terms of actually following it, yeah. no. Obviously Conor McGregor, he's That's everybody knows. Yeah, he's but a that's, media whore like yeah, yeah, big yeah. time. Yeah. Um so everybody knows what he's up to, but Probably uh, right now, that's the only sport I'm really into. MMA. Is MMA. Yeah. 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 I watch yeah. MMA a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like I watch highlights. Someone I know who's fighting. I know the cards. And yeah. did you, yeah. you? So you didn't hear about like Matt Hardy or no. and all that? Okay. No. Okay. You should get into it. I used to. I used to watch MMA like a uh, like Fox and Nickel and I and Pollock, Matt Pollock. You hang out with all those guys still? Yeah, man. Like no, not as often. Like I don't see those guys as much. But uh, when I host my poker games. Yeah. You guys should come. Man, you guys should come to poker. Those, guys those guys always come. Those guys always come to poker. Every single time, it's like, do you want to come? I'm like, why do I Dude, have something I going every I, single I'll time? I'll lose the money. My wife is very particular about like what we do with our money, and so we're, you know, nothing wrong with that. But at so the she's same like, time. if you go out there and spend fifty bucks, you're gonna lose it because I'm like, I can't play poker. I laugh and have too much of a good time, and I'm joking around. Yeah, that's I'll all lose we do. It. But this I'll is the thing, it. like with poker, it it always starts out that way because the blinds are so low. Everyone's just flashing around, having some fun, talking, this and that. And then it's at that point where the blinds, when their blinds get up high, people get quiet. Yeah, it does get quiet. It gets quiet yeah. because now the blinds yeah. mean something where it's, if you lose a hand, your, your stack's gone down. How long have you been putting on this, uh, you playing cards? How long have you been playing poker? So I started this poker thing uh, two years ago. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, so you like as for fun, like hanging out at your house. Oh yeah, totally. So I started doing thing once a month, and have people come over. We'd play some cards, this and that. And I did it once a month, and then we did like a year end thing at the yeah. end of the year. And then I realized that you know what, doing it once a month, it comes quick. Yeah. And it it was like I when I host, like I make food for everybody, and yeah, yeah. It's just everyone. Well, shows. We used to play poker at our house. We used to That's just right. drink beers. Do you remember yeah. cigars, cigars in the cigars. kitchen with with all the doors open, just yeah. so when mom comes home, she's like. Smoking in the house, care. yeah. We're like, but she mom, look at all the doors are open. She didn't care. Oh, she okay. didn't care. Yeah. And do you remember? Care. Do you remember that when when she came home and she's just like, "You guys are playing poker down here." We're like, "Yeah, is that okay?" And she, we're like, "We didn't want to do it in the basement because we wanted to have cigars, so we didn't want to stink up the house." That was awesome. Yeah, that's fine. We so do you remember? Cigars. Dad comes down because we were making noise. Yeah, remember my dad came down. I was like, "You guys are making too much noise down here." Blah, and blah, she blah, comes blah. out the room. You're making more noise than they are. And then I do remember that. And then Andrew came out. I was like, "Can you guys keep it down?" We're like, "Sorry, Andrew." Sorry, bro. Sorry, man. man. We, we got it, you, man. We got you. Fucking bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play some you need, later. You have a you have a long day of smashing barbecues with an eavesdrop. <laughs> yeah, but we liked him back then. Though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was all right, guy. He's he's just, he was good. Shit. You know, he's got his uh, master's degree in paleontology. I thought it was geology. Yeah, here. Paleontology. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's a smart pin? guy. Good for yeah. He yeah. was a smart guy. I keep trying to hook. He was I, a little odd, but I keep trying to. We talk are all to, a little odd. Talk, yeah, I guess so. Right. I keep trying to message him see if he wants to grab a beer sometime, but he's just like, I don't know. I want to. Keep, I want to talk to him. About, like, you know how you went to your dad and talked to him. Yeah. I want to go back and talk to him, talk about his perspective on that time, because that was an interesting time for for him. Yeah. For us. He walked into a weird time. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, we were yeah, at yeah, we were yeah. teenagers, and he yeah, walked into that. That was tough for him, man. Yeah. yeah. But then like, he kind of went. Ooh. Yeah, he fell oh, off real quick. And he was drinking, like talk about somebody drinking. Oh yeah, he loved his fucking oh, alcohol. Remember, man. he was like running around the house drunk, I, like oh, yeah, and, he and like was... completely naked. No, I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's how Danielle first met him. He was naked. Yeah, dude, he'd, be, he'd be running around naked. Yeah. Nice, so he get that drunk, he could, eh? dude. But he oh, drank. Yeah. He, that. he, he didn't really drink beer. He drank hard liquor. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Was, he would start yeah. like eight a.m. drinking yeah. orange juice. Like he was making them. What do you call those? What do you call those fancy Screw, drinks? Screwdriver? No, no, no. That's like a fancy drink that fancy people drink. It's like uh, vodka and orange juice in the morning. Uh, san- uh, not sangrias. Mar- not margarita. It's like a drink when you go to like a brunch and fancy people drink this like this like a drink. Mojitos? Not mojitos. Not a, that's like a... Anyway, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He was getting drunk real early with this weird lizard. <laughs> oh, he's a lizard. <laughs> oh, yeah, the bearded dragon. Remember, remember yeah. the lizard? He loved that lizard. Man. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, shit. We just went off topic again. Oh, uh, whatever, what, what, man. What we're the, catching what up. The we're fuck were we we're filling about? in some people with a lot of history here, uh, man. This is this is before. This is like early, late, late nineties, early two thousand stuff, man. Yeah, this is like two thousand four, two thousand five. So all all your buddies that are do listening remember, to this now, they're gonna dude, be like, John, okay. do you remember that one time you, me, Chad, and and weird Adam Goldrick went to that party over at Ashley's house? You, me, and uh, Adam didn't have girlfriends. 
Remember? I do remember this. And then it was Chad. It was accent. Ashley's. It was Ashley's birthday, and we went there. So. Is that the one where I did the English accent the whole time? No, no, that's another party. <laughs> that's another party. We'll talk about that. <laughs> so we went to this party, and so at the time, Ashley and there was a bunch of other girls who were in this group. They all went. They all went to school with all these other guys. So there was like this big group, and there was probably like maybe like ten of them, girls and guys. And so the guys were always trying to get with all these girls, and we were just like we were older than them, right? So we show up to the party, and we're hanging out. And all three of us ended up, like, sitting with girls and, like, talking to them. So I ended up getting getting with uh, the girl that I started dating. John started dating this girl. And Adam got with this girl. So all three of us go to this party and just swoop in and take over the uh, party. Remember that? I do remember, remember that, that? And we're just like, I'm just like, we just like, we just high fives. We're walking by. Like, we were just played it so cool. Like, we were like the older guys who took it's over. because we didn't give a shit. That's yeah, we didn't, the difference. We didn't, yeah, we didn't. And they were trying way That's the problem. too hard. And we just looked at them like, listen, man. This is what's up. And we all walked out of that party with girls on yeah, our arms. I like, remember that. That was good times. Let's get back. So remember the party we went to? So Chad oh, knew fuck. this guy he played soccer with. And we didn't know any of the people at this party. He was over in like way over in Galt or something. This like fancy place. And so John and John says to me, before I go to the party, he's like, I'm going to talk in the whole party with an English accent. What do you think? I'm like, do it, man. Do the whole party. So this place is packed. Like a jam There's probably about 25 John and I are like... We come in with this case of beer, and we're we were twenty one. We or no wait, no, we were twenty, so we yeah. were legal drinking age. But a lot of the people at the party weren't drink legal drinking age, yeah. and they were having an underage party. So we show up and we're drinking, and John the whole time he's just talking to people with an English accent, the English accent, yeah. and people are like, oh my gosh, you're this from guy's England, from England, and you're oh. like, you had a nice. Oh, yeah, I was doing you, shots with guys. They were he, giving me their out, like they're like, oh, I got a Polish guy well, a shot. You have a good this Cockney is... accent. You have a really good one. Like what? I I practiced it for many years before yeah, 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 yeah. I did that. You but... pulled it off. Oh, yeah, I totally pulled it off that night. It was great, man. But it ended up at that party, so people were trying to get in, but the house was too full, and so people started breaking into the house. Like, and then they threw, like, a rock through the window, and so they called the cops. Yeah, the cops and were so, coming. As soon as we heard the cops were coming, we're like, all right, we're out. So John, me, and, and Chad are like, we got to get out. We we were, like, kind of, like, drunk and drinking and stuff, and so we're like, we're freaking out. We, sh- we probably didn't need to freak out because we were legal drinking age, but it was, like, massive chaos. Everybody's running out. Cops are coming cops are coming i'm like let's go out the back door go out the back door we run out the back door it's like piling out i'm like shoving past people i'm like john grab the case john grabs the case of beer we like jump over the fence we hike the, the case of beer over and like we, we had just started drinking i think we only had like yeah, a couple we were beers only in there for so maybe we're, like, half we're an hiking hour. over fences we're jumping over a fence trying to get to the car we had parked <laughs> down the street probably like a block away so we're jumping fences we run out we run to the car we sit in the back and all of a sudden Ooh, ooh, yeah, ooh, cops ooh. Like. like six cop cars show up and we're just like oh my god like really if you think about it i don't even think about it like why are, why we, are we freaking out why are we f- it's because we started drinking at an age we did yeah so yeah. so we get out of there and like maybe it wouldn't have been such a great way to be like driving we were probably that's the three of us chad probably had a couple beers john and i already had a couple beers too much to drive well, Chad was the only one that could drive. He's the only one that... Uh... It, was his, it was his mom's car. Yeah, it was his car. So yeah. we're in the back seat. John and I are pretty drunk, and Chad's a little bit drunk, and so we're like, we have to get out of here. We got to go. We're driving down the road, and so we're like, okay. So John's like, I'll talk on this side. You talk on this side, okay? We're like, we're talking Chad through driving because we're all like drunk and we're like driving down the road. We're like, okay, guys, stop here. Stop. We're parked up. This cop car pulls up beside us, and I'm just like, oh my God. Yep. And we were just sweating to the oldies. And Chad's like, it's all right, guys. We're, we're going to be just fine. <laughs> he, he pulls off. The cop car turns on his lights, turns around, goes back that way. Remember when we got to my house and we just kept drinking? Yeah, we got That was we a crazy good. party. Yeah, that was a weird party. Oh, and they were like, there's people coming to the front door. And they were like fighting. Yeah. And then we're like, let's get out of here. And then this rock comes flying through the front window and like smashes that. everywhere. And like this guy was walking around topping people's beers. And the guy, remember, remember it that. was a nice house. Yeah, it wasn't. And so like they were destroying this guy's house it was destroyed like they were like yeah. we're like oh my gosh when you when you talk about uh we were talking about chad driving it just it triggered our memory remember that one night when chad we were driving around chad was snowman. dd the snowman oh my god we, heard about we this. drove around for about what two, two three hours. hours we drove her all over cambridge just we would pull over cambridge dune we would literally jump out of the car and demo snowman. snowman and snow forts yeah, yeah. for like three hours so all of a sudden and all, all it, and we were like Chad was, dr- he wasn't drinking, but, but me and we John were in the back. 
We're sharing we a bottle were of Bailey's. Fucking tanked. We're, we're we're sharing this bottle of Bailey's. We're just chugging it back, passing it back and forth. <laughs> we're throwing snowballs. Like we, I think we pulled up to Dad's old house where when he lived in Dune, and we were chucking <laughs> snowballs at his house too. <laughs> <laughs> that, I do remember that. that. And then the one time. So <coughs> there's this one snowman in front of this house, and these this like this, oh yeah, it was people it was early on. It was like the sliding glass door, and the front lawn was like right in front of it. <laughs> and they're like, okay, if somebody hits that, somebody hits that snowman, takes it out, rolls out of it, and just runs to the car. So they planned it out. They said, I'm gonna do it. They want me to go and do it. So the people were sitting there. It was like they saw the Christmas tree. It was like the whole family's just sitting around watching like a nice Christmas movie. And there's drunk, lo- like big lug of me comes r- running just across spears the spears the snowman. Yeah, comes running across the front lawn, kills the snowman. I roll up. I'm falling on the ground. The car's already going down the road. I start. Oh yeah, away. we did like a they roll. They didn't even notice. Roll. He yeah, jumped yeah. back. They in. didn't even notice. No, they didn't. They didn't see it. And then they that one notice. snow fort with, like, the roof, and you fucking caved in. Oh, my God. And I got stuck. <laughs> you got stuck in it. Yeah. And, then, and then the guy turns the light on. What are you doing out there? What are you doing out there? I'm like, oh, my God. I'm, like, stuck in there. And, like, they had made, like, a nice fort. It was, like, a nice yeah, snow fort. They it put was. a roof on it and stuff. Oh, yeah. It was full. Like, like, it was almost a full leg. I did a swan oh dive. My God. I laid it on top of it. Went, fell in it. And I got oh, yeah. Stuck. He buckled. He's whoop. And so, like, I run out of there, smash over there, and I'm laughing. And all the guys are laughing. Get oh, yeah, the car, I think we it. probably down with a good hundred snowmen. Oh, yeah. That night, we just that was destroyed. So much fun. Well, that because was... it was, like, a perfect snow to make snowmen. We just killed so many. Uh, so, oh, yeah. if people, I don't know what year it was, but if you had a snowman that night, you was dead. Yeah, in Cambridge, yeah. We we literally went, we did Preston, we went to Hasbler. Dune. Yeah, we went to Dune, went to Galt. Like, we drove we around for a around, while. And we just, just drink- Demolishing Drinking snowmen. Baileys and just killing snowmen. Oh. I think Drew was there too. Drew was there, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and it was oh me and you. Oh my god, dude! I was in the front, and we had that fucking McDonald's tray. Oh, we were filling those snowballs. We were making snowballs, pre-made snowballs, and just to throw them at like <laughs> random shit. Yeah, yeah, that was a good night, man. I remember oh that. Oh my that god, so fun, dude. dude! Yo, man, it, it's so good catching up with you guys. It really is. This is like so. Like now, look at us. I know, right? We're all married. Wife. Kids, well, I don't know. Except kids. for you, I got a dog. Houses, you planning you know? on it or what? Nah, not right now. Not right now. No, not the no, time. We're just, you know what? We just renovated the house. Our crew, like Joss and I, got we got our jobs stabilized. You know, we're just working. We're busy. We're busy people, and uh, lifestyle right now. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe, man. Yeah, we're talking about know, it. Right? But yeah, no, we had such good times back then, man. And I, I think about them all the time. Me too. I do think Me about too, it man. all the time. It sucks that we're not as close as we used to be. You're like, right. It, you know it does suck. But and you know, I, I, re- I realize, you know, if if I didn't take that fifth year in high school, I'd probably still be hanging out with you guys, and I would probably have a totally different life. Yeah. I would have a totally different life. Yeah. But then again, we can say that about anything, you know? Oh, yeah, of you know? course. But that's what happened. That's And yeah. then, hey, that's life, man. It, that's what goes around. Man, like, we've all been through some crazy stuff. Crazy girlfriends. Yeah. Ernie, John B. Ernie, we were talking about Susan. Yeah, we were John talking about Susan that. the other night smashing through his yeah, that smashing table. through the fucking that table. table. That in the basement? Yeah. yeah. She fell and she was yeah. fucking yelling at me or something. Then somehow she tripped and just No, sm- she got she got mad and she went to get off the couch and when she did it she put her she swung her foot over and she went to put her foot down and she caught the edge of the table. Now they foot. weren't high end. Uh, those tables those to no, they were yes. from Excess Cargo. Excess Cargo. I remember that. Yeah, where, I got my, where I got my car stereo yeah, from. Yeah, those were shit tables. They yeah. were shit tables. Yeah. But I remember her just smash right through the table. We're all like, "Whoa, oh, shit!" And she was fucking furious. I remember oh, she, she used to walk pissed. around, you know, smashing doors and yeah. slamming shit. Remember she slammed the door. And we're that like, was like she was synonymous for slamming doors all oh, the time. Oh yeah, she was a you weird. Mean, you were like, I feel like. You always cared about your girlfriend so much. You were so loving, and like you just wanted just to get along. But like you just had some crazies, dude. You just had some crazies. Oh my god! I'm glad that you settled down. You found a girl that you love, and nothing's changed. You know what I mean? Like I'm glad. That, I'm glad that you like settled down. I, I feel like out of all of our friends, like we can sit back and look like you know, like some of us are still doing some stuff. Like Chad's. Doing his thing. I don't really talk to him a whole lot. Once in a while, we'll catch yeah, up. I and don't talk to him much and Drew's doing his own thing. Like he he <coughs> came back from the army. He's dealing with yeah, his, what yeah, he's got yeah. going on. And like you're you got a family. Me. Ernie's let's got... let's just say this though. Like John's not friends. He's no no no, fucking no, no, no. family. I mean, like... out of that core Thanks, group, we're like like of all the guys that hang out. Like we 
you know, we've, we've, we've all established ourselves. You know, like, we've made something. Exactly. Like, people didn't always, like, you know, we've done some shit. We've been through some shit, and we... We, well, some, we grew up together. Man, that was the thing. We, we grew up together. That was that was like, thing. like literally. Yeah, yeah. We didn't actually separate until like like going yeah. into our adult lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but like literally our entire childhood. Yeah, our, our we, adolescence. Yeah, yeah, the adolescence. The the time. Our early twenties. I remember the night before Drew left for the army. Remember he was going to go to Afghanistan. We were yep. all hanging out. Yeah. We were all eating pizza and we're just like, this might be the last night we all hang out. Like this might be the last time that we all just. We're sitting here. We're just drinking beers, enjoying our time. I think after that point, we all just kind of started doing our own thing. Yeah, it's that's true. true. Hey. And we said that, and we had said that. Like we looked at it that moment, we said, "You know what, guys? This is probably the last time we're all gonna." I do remember that night. That was yeah, uh, yeah. It's such a long time ago when you think about it. I mean, yep. shit, it's over. It's over ten years ago. Oh my gosh. Well, it's 2019. Yeah. Over that, ten. Well, over ten no, years man, ago. that was over ten years ago. Over ten years ago. Yeah. Yep. A whole decade more than, or and Holy more. Holy shit! It's crazy, right? Now look at you guys. You got no hair and you got beards. I still got talk about hair. me not having any hair. Yeah, hey, hey, hey! <laughs> That's why I gave you props when you gave me that picture. I was like, yeah, I got hair. That was a good picture. <laughs> that was a good picture, actually. I know where you got that from too. Uh, I embraced it. You have more hair than I. If, if you if I grow my hair out right now, you got more hair than I do. I actually uh, I shaved my head recently, and because keep it shaved, bro. I my wife doesn't want me to keep it shaved. She oh, wants the hair. So, uh, I had I went to a hairstylist, and this is probably about maybe four months ago. Shaved it, and then after that, I just kept shaving it myself. Just kept yeah. it low, yeah, kept like it me, low right? all the time. Yeah. And uh, my wife was all, eh, I don't like your hair shave. You look different. I don't like it. Grow your hair, blah. So I'm like, fine. So I started growing it back, and uh, yeah, like I I don't. It's so thin now. Like I don't even care. Like, you wear hats still. Uh, like baseball hats? Like all the time. Like, do you wear a hat no. to cover it up? No, I don't really wear hats much anymore. Yeah. Like in the winter time, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. in the summertime, no. Yeah. I mean, I still always just wear hats every day. Every day. I always yeah. wear a hat. Yeah, like when I at my work, I wear a hard hat. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so I I wear I do wear hats every day, but it's just yeah, yeah. not a baseball hat. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no. Dude. Getting a little thin up there. Getting a little thin. Getting that UFO landing site prepared. <laughs> Hey man, genetics. That's right, man. It's happening. Ernie's got more hair. Like I was like, I have like a widow's peak way back, and then it's super thin in the top front. Like it's yeah. like I'm like, I said to Joss the one day. That's why you do this, right? Compensate. I said compensate. Yeah, compensate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I shaved my head for years, right? Oh yeah, when I met you, you had a shaved yeah, yeah. head. Yeah, so I'm like, everyone called you Bobby Hill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that was my nickname. So now I just went like, what's or cheesecake? It? Yeah, cheesecake. <laughs> cheesecake. Bobby Hill. Butters. Uh, butters. Yeah. yeah. Work with butters. Yeah. But then like. A couple years ago, I was talking to Joss. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to get a haircut anymore. I'm going to shave it off. And she was a little apprehensive at the point. Of course. I'm like, it's going to look great. And now she's like, if it grows out even two days, shave your head. You're, you're two days in. I need you to shave your head. I'm like, I'll get it. Hang on. I just haven't had a chance. Like, relax, man. Yeah, it's so still like, stubble. So I, uh, give me a break. I have a Dollar Shave Club. I get uh, the regular blades. Oh, yeah. Every yeah, couple yeah. months. They sponsor, give me sponsor, blades. sponsor. That'd be a great sponsor. <laughs> Dollar Shave Club. It's awesome. It's a great service. How far deep are we on this podcast? We are an hour and 57 minutes. We've been chatting. Wow. Yeah, yeah we run through. So that's why pod- I know. It goes quick. You see how podcasts can be long? Dude, I was telling Ernie last night. I said, uh, how long are we going to run this thing for? And he's like, uh, an hour and a half. it's probably about an hour and a half to two hours. I said, that's fine. He's like, it goes quick. I said, yeah, I know. Because I do, uh, like right now, one of the things I do at work is I'm doing this leadership training. I was mentioned it earlier. Yeah. And it's a three-hour training session. And I literally stand up there and I talk to our workers for three hours and really I, and you I, pres- public- yeah. I present corporate material to our lead hands yeah and, and it's all around basically we cover six different modules and there uh, it talks about like trust accountability yeah. uh, communication feedback conflict resolution and change management and we go through these modules and I have to talk about them and I don't just – I'm not just regurgitating the information. You have to make it entertaining. I make it, and I I have to capture the audience, and I have to keep their attention for three hours of me standing there talking. And the I have two other presenters that are with me. One of them is the uh, shipping superintendent. He's the organizer. He's the one running it. And then I have another supervisor from the uh, fabrication department who's also a presenter – uh, that talks as well. So we split it up between the three of us. So I'm only talking for about an hour, but for these last two modules, 
the one supervisor hasn't been there. So I've been doing both two modules at a time, yeah. which is about three hours of content. And then the superintendent guy, he does like the opening and the closer. So I'm delivering all the content. He's just opening saying, you know, hey, welcome everybody. You know, he recaps the material that we went over before. And at the end, he does the thank yous and hands out the certificates to everybody for completion. Yeah. But I'm covering, I, I said to him, the like, core you, material. you be the bun, I'll be the meat. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's quite interesting. I've actually spoken to our plant controller, our general manager, my, my manager, and apparently they've been getting tons of really good feedback about me. And I haven't heard any feedback about how I'm doing and presenting this material. Uh, but it's but the way that I'm delivering the message is I, I'm actually keeping their attention for three hours. Yeah, you're and adding I'm, humor I'm into making it, right? it, A little bit of humor, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. but I, I make it engaging to them. Yeah. And I make it so that they – because when they talk, I listen to what they're saying, and I use their experiences when I'm covering over my material. So when I talk about conflict resolution, yeah. I hear, I listen to them talking about the issues they have with people, and then I talk to them about how to deal with those conflicts that they're dealing with, and I explain the strategies and the techniques from this material, like how to deal with conflict and how to get through it. Make it and it's all about, like, and one of the big things I get into is, you know, it's all about emotion management. How do you got to, like, you control your emotions. And when you get into a conflict with somebody in a workplace setting, I said, as a leader, you need to you need to stay in control of your emotions, regardless of how they react and how they act. You can't control that person. If they're gonna blow up and scream and yell in your face, that's them. You can't control that. What you can control is yourself. Reaction. So if you maintain your emotions and you separate yourself from what them screaming and yelling at you, and you focus on the problem, not the person. Because the person's not the problem. It's what they're doing is the problem. So, you know, for and they, were, they would talk about things like, oh, guys showing up late from breaks all the time or, you know, guys being problematic and, and you know, spreading their negativity to other employees and impacting their areas. And we'd talk about those individuals. And I said, you know, when you have these conversations with people, separate them from the problem. So when you talk to that person, say, listen, like, you want to be negative, Nelly? Fine. Be as negative as you want. I don't care how grumpy you are. Do it. Be angry. Be grumpy. Be pissed off at whatever it is. You, but don't. You're impacting my team. You're impacting production. You're impacting the culture that is on this table. That's the problem. And they would discuss that. And then when that person blows up, keeping your composure is key. Because as a leader, the second you lose your temper, you lose credibility. And you lose trust. Yep. with that individual yep. because nine times out of ten in a workplace setting when someone blows their lid on you it's not about you and you keep your cool give it an hour or two they come up to you and apologize yep but if you blow up back on them that's just going to keep that tension yep. and they're going to they're going to have a lot more trust and respect for you because of the fact that you're able to maintain and control your emotions and that's and I and I tried to tell this one guy because I could I was remember this one guy I was talking to and the whole time he's looking at me like how am I going to do this? Like he's in a hard rock and cause he's in a position where now he feels that his, his workers control him. Mm. And basically if he asks someone to do something and they don't want to do it, basically he feels that they're in a position saying, Oh, well, if I don't want to do it, I'm just going to, Oh, I'm hurt or I'm going to go home sick and they're going to go. And then he's going to lose people and he doesn't want that. So he feels like he, his people have him by the balls a little bit. And I said to him, I said, listen, if someone does that to you, if they say they're going to go home, tell them to go home and tell them you'll call them when you need them. Call their bluff. Yeah. See how they react to it. Yeah. And if they go home and they show up the next day, you go up to them and say, what are you doing here? I, I didn't tell you to come back. I didn't call you. What are you doing here? So I thought you went home. And I said, and not only that, if they leave work, that's job abandonment. Yeah. And, and he kind of opened his eyes like, oh. I said, listen, you're a leader. I said, you need to separate yourself from the herd. I said, I get it. They're your coworkers. They're people that you used to work with, but you've got a promotion. You're now a lead. You need to separate yourself a little bit. However, still have respect for your people. Still level with them. Be on that same level. But when guys try to push your buttons, you need to rise above it and take that professional style towards it. And I had a good conversation with him afterwards. And even another lead hand, he... He came up to me afterwards on one of the presentations. We did trust and accountability. And, you know, there's, there's, there's four components to trust. 
First one's sincerity. The second one is, account, uh, is uh, competency. And the third one is reliability. And then the fourth one is uh, self-interest versus interest in others. So when you, if you can combine all four of those components, if you're sincere with your messages and mm-hmm. you're a sincere person, if you're a competent person and you're reliable, people will trust you. And also, if you have interest in others, they will trust you. That's the four main components that build that that make up trust. Yeah. That's why people trust you. When you think about people at your work, they trust you because you're a competent person in what you do. You, when yeah. you make decisions, they trust your decisions because you're competent. They also trust your decision because you're there every day. You're reliable. You work. You do a good job. You're also you're also trustworthy because when you talk to somebody and you mean something, you're sincere about what you're saying. And they take you seriously. Yeah, and you and you have their best interest at heart. You have their too, best right? And you're worried about your. You want to make sure that they they're coming in that's every right. day and they're going home the exact same. And that's and the, that's it. What's the fourth? The fourth one, one is self interest versus interest in others. So the thing with this one is it's kind of outside the realm of those three. Those three components make up trust: sincerity, competency, reliability. There's a fourth component that's outside of that circle because you can have all three of those and, and you're a trustworthy person. However. If you're the type of person that's, yeah, you're reliable, you're competent, and you're sincere, but if you don't take interest in others, people will see you as untrustworthy hmm. because they see it as you're only out for yourself. Right. However, but on the, on the other side of that, though, you don't want to uh, <coughs> be looked at as, as favoritism too, right? If you're being too well, personal no, with somebody. But if, you're, no. if you show self-interest in someone, if they come in and talking about their day and stuff – if they're, if they're talking about their day and you show actual genuine interest in them. Oh, yeah. Right. That's, yeah. that's what also builds trust. And that's that's another But you just component. have to watch that that doesn't turn into favoritism. But this is the thing too, is right? people, people cannot trust you. You're a competent person. You're reliable. Yep. You're every day. You're sincere reliable. when you give out directions and, then, yep. and you're sincere with what you say. Um, but if you're only in it for yourself, people can read that shit. Yeah. And they know, like, I don't trust this guy because – He's not in. He's not in for my best interest. He's only in it for himself, and people will tend to not trust people. And I actually, uh, I went through this experience. And before I went, when I was delivering this content, I was having some major issues with a coworker of mine. Mm. And you know, when I went through this model, I'm like sitting. I'm like shit. I'm like I'm sincere as hell. I'm competent in my job. I'm reliable as hell. I'm here every goddamn day. Why does this person have issues with me? Why don't they trust me? And I realized after a while is that. I wasn't taking interest in what their work was and what they needed to accomplish and Mm. their goals. And I started, said, okay. So I started having, conversing more with this person and asking them, hey, like, what do you need? What are are you working on? What are you doing? What can I do to help you? And I started taking interest in their objectives. Then our our relationship started getting better. Yeah. And, And it's funny because, and I try to tell these people, like, these are, a lot of these things like trust, accountability, communication, all that, they're behavioral tools that you can use and you can master them. And they can become second nature. And, they, and then the more you use them, the, yeah. the, the, it does become second nature. And for me now, like I'm getting to that point where it is becoming second nature. So I can approach a situation, whether it's a conflict, whether it's about communicating certain aspects, making sure I'm sending the clear messages, making sure that it's when it comes to communicate, there's two parts of communication, right? There's the message and there's also listening. There's receiving the message. So we talk about different levels of listening where there's, there's three levels of listening. Level one listening is where you're gathering information from somebody in order to solve a problem. So in other words, when someone's talking to you, you're taking their information and all you're doing is you're thinking about how to solve it or what you're going to say back to them. Mm -hmm. You're not actually listening to them. You're just anticipating your response. Yep. To what they're saying. You're getting ready to say something. You're getting ready to say something. Yep. You're hearing mm-hmm. them, but you're not hearing them. And then there's level two listening where it's more you're curious about what they're saying and you're asking more questions. Oh, why, why, does, why do you feel that way about this? Or what, what do you think the problem is? And you're, in, you're trying to engage in their, what they're saying. And you're not so worried about what you're going to say. It's more about, oh, let's, let's hear more about what you have to say. And then there's level three listening, whereas now you start getting more in depth and you start understanding their emotional state. So when you're talking to somebody, you're reading their emotional state, Body language. whether they're frustrated, whether they're happy about what they're talking about, and you start to gauge what they're saying not only are you listening to them you're you're listening to their body language yep. and then when you can when you get to level two and level three listening that's when you're truly listening to somebody mm-hmm. so when you respond back 
you're actually responding back in a more appropriate way because Genuine. you're not just listening to anticipate what you're going to say next or to solve the problem. It's more you're, under, you're reaching understanding. And when you can reach understanding with someone's message, it's not about relating yourself to somebody. It's more about just understanding where they're coming from. And that's one of the things I've talked to people about is when you get into a, you know, you're communicating about someone that if, you know, they're showing up late for work every day and they sit down in the office and they, you know, and you're like, you're late again. And you start asking them questions like, instead of saying you're late, you're getting written up, you're going home, it's more of what's going on in your life? Why, are, I notice you're late every day. What's, what's happening here? What's cause, what's, what's the reason why you're behind your late? And if people start breaking down in tears or if they start getting angry, it's, and, and you hear this free, you hear this phrase a lot. When people say, "Oh, you know, I'm going. I got problems. My my mother's sick, and, and or my wife's divorcing me, or my my kids are not whatever it may be that's problematic in their life." A lot of nine times out of ten, a lot of people say, "I understand. You know, I understand where you're going." And I tell it to them, "You don't fucking understand. You don't live their life. Don't tell yeah. someone if they're telling you they're they're pouring out their guts to you. Don't ever say you understand. All you what what you should say to them is saying." That must be really hard. And you sympathize and you get on that level with them. And you sit there and you say to them, like, wow, that must be really hard for you. I can't imagine what that's like. Yep. And, and right then and there, it's it you break down barriers mm. with them, but then you can also lead to listen, like, that must be really hard. So like what so what are some steps that you think you can take to 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 get yourself at work on time and you bring it back and then yeah. you make them think about the solutions mm -hmm. and then you have that person come up with the solution as opposed to start showing up on time for work and you get that collaborative decision and you motivate that person to want to show up on time and that's just an example of something so I, I, I learned yeah. a lot from this stuff and like I no said like, these are behavioral tools they're very hard because you have to be very self-aware of exactly. what you are doing. Yeah. It's, it's not like a, about It's like that. a full circle empathetic listening. It's yeah. and it's sometimes it's not even about empathetic. Sometimes it's about like getting aggressive. Yeah. If someone's bullshitting you. Yeah. Cuz especially now when you're hiring guys that are getting younger and younger and younger and they're coming out of school and they're they've younger got a, they've got a chip on their shoulder. That's what I see all the time, yep. dude. They and feel it's entitled. You, and you do I you, should have this job. Right. Yep. And you follow all the steps like you say, you know, you get in there it's just like why are we late? Um, is there something I can do to help you like, to make this thing easier? They might be self-reflective, but self-reflective to go, I'm going to bullshit my way out right. of this. Yeah. Right, yeah. And the, the thing is, as well, is when it's you look at these younger generations of kids, and, I mean, not to knock younger generations, and, I mean, even older generations, not everybody has the tools. They don't know how to control their emotions. They don't know how to... to no coping mechanisms. They don't know yeah. how to approach situations accordingly in a business environment. They don't know how. Yeah their emotions get the best of them mm -hmm. and they don't know how to deal with situations or go through things using these tools. They don't have them. Yeah. And that's not something that you get taught in school. It's, it's something you learn with age. As you get older, you become wiser. That's what people say, right? As yeah, you get older, you yeah. get the wiser you become. And that's something that like, you know, at my age now, like shit, we're in our thirties boys. Yep. Like we're, we're done fucking around and it's time to get down to business. And like, I've learned these tools and I utilize them. And I've had so many people compliment the way I present this material to them because I put it, I put it in a way that they can actually understand and utilize and put them in a thing. Because at the end of this, at the each, at the end of each presentation, we have this section where they have to have action plans. Mm -hmm. So we go through the trust module. We talk about trust, what it is, how to build it, how to repair, how to rebuild. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the steps to do all these things? And at the end of it, I say, all right, go to turn to this page. Go to your action plans, and I want you to write down an action plan about trust. What is something you're going to do to either build trust with your teams, rebuild trust with an individual, or become more trustworthy yourself? Maybe there's areas you're lacking in. And I give them all kinds of examples, and I say, just write down one thing that you're going to do in this, from this module, and, how, and, you, and I want you to execute on it. So when, you go, when they go back onto the floors, they're conscious. And they actually think, okay, maybe there's a problematic person in their departments that they don't trust or they have conflict with all the time. And it's okay. Maybe they're, maybe they're actually like, I want to rebuild trust with this person. Mm -hmm. They have the tools and they can practice them. Yep. And I tell people, just keep practicing. You're not always going to get it right, yep. but keep practicing because the more you use these behavioral tools, it'll just become second nature for you. 
And you can use this outside of work too. I do it all the time. Yeah, I bet you do. I do it all the time. Yeah. And that's one of the things. I actually went through this leadership training. It was funny because I went to uh, I actually went to Atlanta uh, back in October with a colleague of mine to go do this leadership training for our supervisors. And so we flew out to Atlanta, Georgia, and we went down to uh, Noonan to uh, plant there. And we spent four days in this leadership development training. And at the same time, I was facilitating this development training. So now I'm a now I'm a, an attendee, whereas back at my plan, I'm a facilitator. So I'm walking in there going, and I didn't walk in there going, I know everything because I'm doing because I'm the one training it. Uh, I learned a lot from it, and I took a lot of it back with me to facilitate with me. And but they, they one of the things they talk about the first is, you know, like, oh, what everyone's, you know, every, every person's got a superpower. What's your superpower? And some people were like, I'm really organized. Like, and other people were like, I'm on time for everything. I don't, I'm never late. Time is something I pay attention to. And these are, you know, superpowers, they call them, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one of the superpowers, when they got to me, I said, one of my superpowers is I like to read people. So when I'm at work, if any engage, any conversation I engage in, I might be talking to you, but I'm analyzing your body language and I'm analyzing your tone and I'm look and I'm watching. I'm not doing that with you guys. I'm just having to shoot the shit. Mm. But when I'm in a business setting and I talk to anybody I talk to, I'm looking at facial expressions, I'm looking at their body language, I'm looking for something so that I can in tune myself with that person and not understand them, but at least I know how to react with them. Mm -hmm. So that I can be careful if someone's frustrated, I can be careful with what I say. Or if someone's in a happy mood, I can be a little more joking with them. Um, and, yep. I, and that's what I said. I said, I'm, I have the ability to, to read people. And I like to try to find out where their mind is at and what they're thinking. And I said, that's something that I do every <clears> single day. Like almost every interaction I have with every uh, worker at my work is whether I'm sitting down having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them or if I'm just shooting with them, I'm analyzing. I can them. see why you want to go to work every day. You love, I, it. You love I, it. I do. I analyze the shit out of people and I, <laughs> I try to figure out, like, I recently, uh, I'm actually recruiting. He's pretty keen on it, I'd say. He seems pretty keen. Pretty keen. Yeah, I love my job. I do. I really <laughs> like it and uh, I think it's, it's really good. Uh, it's, it's, I'm busy as hell. i um, working on a ton of assignments right now. And uh, one of the things that I, t I actually, I'm, 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 I'm hiring right now for uh, one of the uh, trainer positions. So, because I used to be a trainer. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, you're looking for a job? So, anyway. <laughs> so, anyway, so uh, it's an internal posting, and it's for a trainer, floor trainer position in, in the harvest department. So, right now, over the last week, I've been doing interviews, and I've been interviewing employees from our plant for this position to work for me. Mm -hmm. And it's it's funny, the, the people you get, because, you know, when you're doing an interview, I don't know if you've ever interviewed somebody I have, for yeah. a job. Yep. You can tell who wants it. And who's just looking who's for something for different? Some, yeah. Who's looking for something different, or who's just kind of there to just to be there, and you know, who who's not really interested in doing it, but they they think it's an escape from their job, right? And the entire time I'm asking them questions, you know, I ask them some basic questions like, you know, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? You know, uh, you know, why do you want this job? Why should I hire you? <laughs> you know, like sell yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to sell yourself. And some guys do it well. Some yeah. guys don't. And a lot of these people that I interview, the last time they've been in a job interview is like over 20 years ago. So they don't have a lot of interview experience. And I don't knock them for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but some people do interview well because they just know, either they know what to say they or want to be heard or they want the job. They actually, they really, really want to do this. They think it's good for their career. Yeah. They're, they and they're confident a, in themselves. They have a general right? interest yeah. in people and they want to help people develop. This is like, they see it as a calling for them. And, like, yeah, I did a bunch of interviews, and I interviewed this one guy, and he, over the last little while, he's been training somebody on his job to kind of help him. That's me. Yep. And uh, he's been trying to – he's been training him, and I've actually gone out there and worked with them myself. I go on the line and work with them myself because it's um, – when people see a supervisor online, it's engaging. Oh, management's on the line. They're, yep. doing, they're, they're down the, – they're on the front lines with us. Yeah. They like to see that. It's good for engagement. And I do that from time to time because – There'll be people that are maybe upset, maybe struggling, not happy with where they are. So I'll go out there and work with them. And it, it helps motivate them again and get them back in that spirit because they see me doing it with them. Mm -hmm. and, oh, he's not just sitting at his desk. He's actually out here 
doing physical labor. And so this guy, anyway, he's been training this guy, and he's just an hourly. We use a lot of our workers to train because they're the experts on the jobs. And he applied for the position. So I, uh, and now what I do with everybody is I pull their attendance record. I want to see how reliable they are. Yep. I know I already know who you are, but I want to see how reliable you are. So this guy, unfortunately, had a terrible attendance record. <laughs> and so we're going through the interview, and I'm asking him all the questions. I already know the outcome of this. However, I still want to hear him out. And he interviewed very well. And, uh, but at the end of it, I said, listen, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I said, I want to talk about your attendance. And I could see right away he was kind of like, Ooh. fuck. Yeah. Because he knew over, over 2018 he had a bad year, and he knew that. And I said, let's talk about it. Like, what's going on here? Like, you missed, you've missed too much time, like an accumulated amount of time. He had legitimate reasons for it. Whether they were true or not, that's up for yeah. me to believe or not, uh, and whether he's truthful. But obviously I have to believe him because I have to trust that he's telling me the truth. Uh, now, for the most part, yeah, he was telling me the truth because the person I was interviewing with, with me, we're both interviewing, he knew all of this stuff already. And then at the end of it, and I said, listen, the only thing that's holding me back is, is this. I said, you know, right now at this point in time, I think you got a lot of potential, and I think you're a great person. And I said, my answer right now to you is no, based on this. And I said, that does not mean there will not be opportunities later down the road for you. And I explained to him, I said, listen, just because you're not in a leadership role does not make you, or does not mean you can't be a leader. I said, being a leader is, is here. You could be a leader, even if you're not a supervisor or a lead hand or anything, you can be a leader. It's about who you are and what you want. I said, take this and go out there and start being a leader. Start owning your job. Start holding other people accountable. Start demonstrating those leadership qualities that I know you have. And he went out there, he went back out there, and he's, he's now turning into a star performer. And that's why I interviewed him. I already knew he wasn't going to get the job. You just wanted to, but, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. But I did it for an engagement deal, and that's yeah, what yeah, yeah. the other guy and I talked about. It's like, he's not going to get the job, but let's, let's bring him in. Yeah. Let's talk to him. Let's well, see up. if we can re-engage this guy to go back out there and start doing what he needs to do because yeah eventually my team's going to expand and i'm going to be looking for people but you know what there's another there's another saying that i've always been told is you know dress for the job you want don't dress for the job you're doing yeah I've heard that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Job, job you've got, not for the job. Except you don't want. go to don't go to work with a a driving suit on if you want to be a car driver. You know That's what I mean. I mean. Like you know don't I mean? don't don't go to work doing the don't do the do I, the start do the job that you want to have. Don't don't just sit there and do the job you have. Or yeah, it's the, the phrase is just dress for yeah. the job you want, not for yeah. the job you have. Yeah. So when I go to work every day, yeah, I wear button up shirts and I wear dress pants. Man. Can I just interject one thing? When we were kids, you said to me, when I get older... I'm going to wear suits. I'm going to wear suits when I go to work. Yep. I want to want to dress up. I want to dress nice. I want to wear a shirt. I want to sometimes wear a tie. I want to go to work. And I want to dress up. I've done that. I was like, that. that's cool, man. That's I've done, cool. I, I do that. I know you do. I haven't worn a tie because it's business casual. It's yeah, not yeah. formal. You did it. But that's, Dude, and that's did, what I'm doing. You did it. And yeah, I've gotten some criticism. I've had some people look at me and, why are you wearing, why are you wearing, why are you wearing all these fancy clothes? And I just and I've said to those people, I said, "You have a problem with the way I dress." I said, "If you do have a problem, talk to HR." And I say that to them because I'm not wearing anything inappropriate. I'm dressing for the job I want, not for the job I have. And even when I was when I was a trainer, and I worked on the floor, I wore a dress shirt and dress pants to work. I dressed for the job that I wanted, and it it just it sends because perception's everything. How people perceive you is really important. Yep. Because even if you don't know somebody, if they perceive you a certain way, then they're that's how they're going to approach you. That's the conclusion they jump to. And that's that's what their mindset's at. Yeah. And so yeah, so I I wear dress pants, button up shirts. Yeah. The odd time I've worn a suit. I, people look at me weird, and they're like, "Why are you? Why the hell are you wearing a suit? We work at a slaughter plant." And I say, "Listen, you got a problem with like?" And I've and I've had other colleagues of mine comment on how I dress for work and they weren't happy about it and I look at them and I remember saying it to one guy and I said listen if the way I dress 
does not affect my performance of my job. So shut up. Like, don't, don't make any more comments or we're going to have a different conversation because now, now you're Getting harassing personal. me. You're yeah. harassing me. And, I've, and, I've, and they, no, nobody says nothing to me now. I'll dress, whatever, I'll dress however I want. And I don't know. I got a guy that runs a dozer and he wears a button-up shirt and he's a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> he's dressing for the job he wants. He's dressing for the job he wants. Yeah, but he ain't no, getting I mean, it, though. Mind you, you can dress for the job you want. It doesn't mean you're going to get it. Yeah, you you got to act be, on it, too, right? You can wear a button-up well, shirt. You got to back it up. It affects the Being mental state because right. you're like, this is the job I want, and I'm going to... Yeah, remember uh, Mr. Laurente at high school? <laughs> the green cigarette. The green cigarette. <laughs> he would say to me, he said the exact same thing. I would go to my shop job, and I'd have a dress shirt, and I'd put coveralls on it, and I'd wear nice shoes and dress pants, because I dressed for the job that I wanted. And he ended up running the shops. And then he was semi-retired, and there was a teacher. Yep. He said, that's what I did. I went in there, I did those dirty jobs, but I dressed for the way that I wanted to eventually be. Yep, because mm-hmm. you stayed out. You stay there. You don't go. Like I see a lot of people. They go to work with pajama pants and a hoodie. Yep. Unfortunately, That's with fine. my unfortunately with my job, I work. I have to clean up human feces sometimes, so I dress for the job that uh, I don't want to wreck my clothes. <laughs> yeah, you know, I which is fine. Which is yeah. fine because like yeah. I used to go to work and yeah, I would wear yeah. my I wear my nice clothes and I have to change into a uniform. But mind you. Any opportunity I have where I'm gonna have to go to like a team meeting or if I have to be yep. involved in something, right. I'm dressing up, I'm being professional, I'll That's show up right. in the clothes that people I know. look at you and they start they perceive yep. you as someone who's take you to be taken yep. seriously. Yeah. And like I said, like I know people say don't judge a book by its cover, but a lot of people do. It's absolutely. Like I go to job interviews, I wear a button up shirt, button up collar, I keep my hands all on my lap yep. so nobody sees my hand tattoos. Don't look at your phone. I don't even have my phone in my pocket. Yeah. You know, you because I they kill take, interviews. they look. I kill interviews. That's and that's yeah. the thing. When they come out yeah. and look at you, and if they see you on your phone, they're reading you right away. Yeah. If you're they're sitting analyzing there, the you're, shit out of you. The person sitting there and looking at the door, looking at you, and they're ready to go, and they're not like, "Yep, just uh, I'll just be just a second, just texting my wife." No, you got to be paying attention. You got to be knowing what you want. And you got to be there at work. That's right. I got go. interviewed once by a guy that was on his phone, and I was just like, well, "He didn't want to be there then." That's exactly that's right. what I he said to him. him. I said. Um, Clearly, you're not interested in, in hiring anybody. I really got a I said, because this is pretty unprofessional. I was like, hey. I uh, I don't know if I want to work for you guys. And he's really just good. like, really? I went, yeah, man. I said, I don't think I need a job that badly here. Wow. Good and for he's you. like, uh, well, there's the door. I said, I can see it. Wow. Good for you. But I was just like, it, it, it seemed like I... I didn't need the job. It was something yeah. I was getting. I always get laid off in the Chris, at Christmas time. Okay. And I haven't. I haven't. Knock on wood. I haven't got laid off. I've been doing pretty good. Excellent. But uh, but yeah, no. It was just something for me to like. It was something I could do while I was off, right? Yeah. Because you saw right then and there, it's like okay, these these people are not taking interest. This in is me. how he's doing the interview process. They're not. In, they're not interested in me. Yeah. yeah. They're interviewing, but they're not taking interest. Yeah. So obviously, they're not. Even if like even if I get the job going forward. They're not going to invest their time in me. Yep. They don't. They don't actually care. Yep. And that obviously, you don't want to work for someone who's not going to give a shit. That's absolutely. No, right. I, I went. I went to. Uh, I, I left there. I got a phone call back from somebody else higher than this person. Mm-hmm. They interviewed me just because somebody knew me, and they were just like, "We're really sorry. It was that." I came in. I did the interview process again with somebody else. They were just like, "We were interviewed for this. We're going to actually put you at a different position because yeah. we need somebody at that position." I went and interviewed for it. I went into my first initial. Uh, orientation day I waited around for an hour and a half for the trainer to show up <coughs> I went in to do my training I went to do all the written shit all that really? all that I sat in after I did all my written stuff because I uh, I pay attention when when somebody tells me I need to watch something and it's safety related I'm always gonna keep my eyes open so I I did that I did the paperwork I did the paperwork uh, for the next one as well because I was bored because he didn't show up I sat waiting for my trainer to come in for an, another hour and a half so it's now about four hours, five hours into my training session, and I pretty much just said, well, uh, this pretty much reminds me of my first interview. Thank you. Peace. I'm out. Yeah. And he's like, your day's not done yet. I said, oh, yes, my <laughs> day is done yet. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I'm out but here. But I brought that up because I've had, we've had guys that we brought in to train. Equipment's not there yet. It's the first day that uh, – well, good, good audio. Um, 
and uh, and we brought them into train. Truck's not truck's not ready. Equipment's not there. They're just like. What did I what did I walk into? Yeah, like exactly. why am I coming to a place that's yeah. so disorganized that they're not even ready to, and that's they went right. home. Yeah. And you can't blame them. No, that's exactly. You can't blame it. them cuz it, it, it's true. Like it looks bad. And then uh, that's and that's a, that's another big thing that I have to consider too with my position because a lot of my a lot of my metrics are based around retention engagement of employees. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when I go for my, you know, my half year performance evaluation my boss looks at you know what's our turnover rate and i get like that's i get based on that that's stuff. you that's me yep. and i mean i'm not the only one because it takes everybody to engage employees i'm, I'm one person um but i really have to drive it and i actually had, i got into an argument with a colleague of mine the other day and uh, i was in their office doing an interview with somebody uh, it was a new hire and I do. I conduct an interview within their first week, and I sit them down. And I talk to them. And I ask them a series of questions around, you know, how are things going? How are you being treated? Are people talking to you? Like all these different things. Like, are you getting the attention that you should be getting as a new hire? And I try to get. I get responses for them, and I give them. I give the supervisors feedback about what the their new hires are saying about them. Uh, and then, so I was in the office, and I was talking to this new hire, and a bunch of the other supervisors came in, and. They're all they're, they're trying to kick me out, so that they could have their lunch. And I looked at them and I said, "Guys, there's a cafeteria right over there. Go sit over there." Oh well, well this is where we uh, this is our office. Blah 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 blah. And I just I just stood up and I said, "All right, thanks a lot, guys. Very professional. Thank you." And we left. And then uh, their boss was in the room and he was also part of it, so they kind of ganged up on me a little bit. Mm. So I was very upset. And but I separated them from the problem which was they're being bullies they're ganging up and they're kicking me out that's the problem they're nice people I'm not gonna i'm not gonna judge who they are because of it and you're still putting an impression on this new employee that's exactly it there's yeah. they're putting a bad impression yeah. so i left with this place i said listen go for your lunch go back to work we'll do this later so later on that day i was fuming and i went down into production and i stood right by the big boss and I stood there and I was on my phone he knew what I was doing I was waiting for him to come talk to me I didn't approach him and I did it deliberately I wanted him to come talk to me and I would have stood there and if he wanted to talk to me great if he didn't well at least I know where he stands so I stood there and I'm on my phone doing nothing just waiting I'm actually actually what I was doing is I was uh, taking pictures of violations oh so that I could throw them back because I was angry and I'm like, look at like, where's the accountability on your team? And I was gonna, I was gonna throw him under the bus. And so I was preparing myself for that. And he came over to me. and He's like, what was that all about earlier? And I said, what was what about? <laughs> right, playing a little dumb for a minute. <laughs> and he was all like, you know. And he defended his guys, which I understood. I knew he was gonna do that right away. He's like, you know, that's, it's they only get a half an hour a day to eat their lunch, and that's where they like to sit. This and that. And I said, you know what? I said, I get that. But at the same time, I said in my face, I'm like, I've never been so disrespected in my entire life. I said, I had a new hire there that I was interviewing. I was conducting business, and you guys come in there, and you want to eat your lunch? <laughs> like, you know what? That tells me that you guys don't take my job seriously. And I kind of set him back a little bit. And I told him, I said, and I said, you know, I support your team more than any other team in this entire facility. And he's like, I get that. We appreciate that. And I said, do you? Because you know what, you tell me all the time you want me to be a part of your team. I said, you know what, I don't feel like I'm part of your team. And I, ah! said, and I, oh, yeah, and I gave it to him. And I said, you know what, and I and I, and again, I took this whole conflict resolution because when you get into a conflict with someone, it's it's easier to talk. Of, don't don't get on the offense. You 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 you. It's more you have to get into the. This is how what you did made me feel. Yep. And you want them to understand where you're coming from. And that's what I did. I said, this is how it made me feel. This is how your team made me feel, and I don't like it. And I said to him, I said, I don't feel like I'm part of your team. You want me to be part of your team, but I don't feel like it. And I said, you know what? I don't think I've ever felt a part of your team. And that, that set him back. Like, he was a little upset about it, and I'm glad he was. Because I kind of, I, I told him where I stood. This is where I stand with you and your team. And long story short at the end of this conversation it was perfect because he said to me he's like all right john is like what can we do to help you <laughs> and when he said that i was like pocket time and he said to me, he's like think about it i said i will 
I went back to my desk, wrote down a bunch of stuff that I wanted him to do. Went back. I had a meeting with him uh, today. Uh, we talk about training every Friday, what's coming up, who's going to go where, how, how this person's doing, talk about what's our next moves. And I said at the end of the meeting, I said, all right. So I thought about what you said to me the other day, and I said, I got some things I want to talk to you about. And he's like, all right. I said, first of all, I want, I need this. I see, a, I see too much of this. I need more of this mm -hmm. from your team because it's setting bad precedence. It's setting bad precedence with our new hires. I said, second, I need this because I see too much of this. I said, if you guys can do this for me, this will help me and will help you in the, in the long run. Okay. So th it worked out in my favor and because it, at the end of it, instead of me just being pissed off at him and his team, I, s I, took, I took the higher road and said, you know, this is how you made me feel. It turned out to be like, you know, he, he, now he wanted to help me. I was like, <laughs> perfect. And I went to my boss after and I said, this is what happened. This, and he looked at me, he's like, good job. Like, you handled it properly. And so, yeah, so definitely it's, I don't even remember what I was getting at here. You were talking about how you're setting a precedence and working with people and understanding like, you know, you were, you were making your job and you were talking with people and you were doing an interview process and working with people. I walked out of the room and then or, or, or you were talking about. Oh, yeah. We were talking about your interview and how yeah. they weren't interested in interviewing you and you were just yeah, like, it was, screw you guys. It was a, yeah, yeah, it yeah, was yeah, a yeah. very, very rough interview and I've sat through a lot of them for a company and they were... They were going to bring me in for doing interviews and stuff like that, but it just didn't work out. And that's out, the thing, but. too. It's, and when you get a job interview, it's not always about you getting the job. It's about you wanting the job. Yeah. They have to be yeah. just as attractive to you as you are to them. Yeah, if they make the job seem like I'm like, actually, you know what? I don't really want this I job. I don't really want to work for you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, if yeah. you, don't sound, you don't seem attractive to me. And, and that's the thing. What employers see is, oh, well, you need the job. It's not we want. It's not. Yeah. It's, no, it's also I want to have. I want to want this job. If yeah. you if you go into the if you go into the uh, the interview where you're almost desperate though like it's it almost looks really bad like it, you can you can tell it you really we can. had we had yeah. a guy and he was a manager and I remember when we used to go to team meetings he would sit there and be on his phone all the time while other people were talking and we're like dude you're a manager like when someone's talking you should be listening like not just sitting there. And it's, you know, when he's talking, everybody's listening. Because he's a manager. Yeah. He's got to have that attention. But when someone else on your team is talking and presenting things like stats and things like that, they're talking, and you're sitting there doing this. You don't care. That but tells your yeah. people you don't give a shit what they do. For all that learning. work and all the effort they put in That's to right. present something. That's right. Like, you assigned this work to them, yeah. and yet now you're not taking any interest in it? Like, what the fuck? So, yeah. It's, 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 it's funny. How did you get, like, this is so interesting, man. Like, I've known you for years. This is, like, the Humor. perfect job. Sorry. This is the perfect job for you. You've been working towards this kind of a job your whole life. You've always been able to It took me 13 years to get where I am now. Like, man, like, just hearing you talk, like, I'm proud of you. Yeah. It's a lot different. Eh? I'm really I'm, proud of you, dude. Dude, like, from where, yeah. like, we've came from, like, just, like, we haven't talked in a while. We haven't had, like, a serious conversation. No, no, we haven't. You and I like used this. to have serious conversations for years. We would talk dude, for hours. I used to challenge you and your religion all the time. Remember those conversations yeah. we yeah. used to have? Yeah. And it was, they were logical conversations. Yeah. And I would and the funny thing is try to reach understanding. And sometimes in those conversations, you'd be like, all right, let's go to church tomorrow. I want to go. Let's hear about this. Yeah, God I went years. to your church many times. Yeah, yeah, many, many times. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, I'm not a religious guy. That doesn't mean I'm not open to yeah. different, different. But we've things. had. I'm just saying to you. I want to put this on your perspective. <laughs> Hearing after this podcast, we like. This is cool that we get to do this. And oh, I'm going to be listening to it's this. It's an again. interesting forum. Podcasts are an interesting forum. It's a conversation. It's a back and forth. It's a give and take of everything that you've been saying and talking about, listening and empathetic listening and being like you know. Yeah. But just hearing you talk and speak, this job is perfect for you it's, i'm proud of you man i'm thanks. proud of you thank you yeah, man. you know brother. what I'm, I'm proud of you guys that you guys are doing this kind of stuff it's <clears throat> you know when you guys asked me to do this i was kind of like why are these guys doing podcasts like, yeah, yeah. Well, what is this all about the like funny, what, uh, the funny thing is what motivate okay what motivated you guys to do this him, him. so on, let's talk about so, this so you know me i like i'm, I'm gonna earn easy Sorry. so i like public speaking i like the public speak so excited i, I took talking. a swing Same. at the mic um, I love talking and I love the interaction. I love conversation. I love learning. I love all of the, all the aspects. So I went on a, a, a radio show. A friend of mine has it's public radio 
and we went on it. And I love this guy. I love I was, Riley. I was really excited he was. Doing I love it too. Riley. Yeah. I love this guy. He's a cool kid. I work with. I helped him. I'm like, I talked to him at TA. I said, this gar- this job is garbage. You're better than this. I like, I spoke some life into his situation, and he's moved on. So he got himself a radio show. He's in public radio. Nice. He's not the most avid speaker though. I love him. So I'm gonna premise this with, I love him. He's a great guy. Yeah. So I'm on the radio show and we're talking. And I'm like, I want to start a conversation. I want to talk about the music. I want to talk about this. And, and he I'm would, texting him And he the would whole just time. go, that's awesome. Let's play the next track. And and that was the continuous con- con- continuation for the whole hour. He was, I would talk, and they'd be like, that's awesome. And then he'd play let's music. Let's play the next track. And I'm like, come on, man. Let's have a back and forth. Let's do this. And he wasn't always receptive. And he said to me, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm not much of a talker. It's, I, I get a little bit nervous. What are you doing in this business? <laughs> I don't know what to say, he said. It's public radio. So. I think he was just really into the music because when you could hear <laughs> so him talking about it. So after the fact, Ernie and I had a conversation. Okay. I said to Ernie, I can do better than that. I said to you. We can do this. I wrote him. I said, and I said to him, I, I completely it. agree. I'm like, we can do this and we can yeah. do it better. Ernie knows the music and the quality. I know how to. to You've t- always been the audio guy. I remember we used to set up. Uh, <laughs> Decks in my car, subwoofers. Yeah. You'd like run the wiring all and, like, through it. And I'm the. You did it. My neon lights the one yeah, time. That's right. right? Yeah, that's and right. And so, and I'm the conversation guy. I love to start a conversation. Yeah, I love talking too. with I love people. Talking. And I love. We I'm love the that. button. I'm the button presser. No, 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 Seriously. No, no. I'm just that's saying right. it's my passion. I, it's my work. Yeah, I know. For I my know, job, I, I talk Amen. to people. The guys on stage would be nothing without the guys behind the scenes. Right? Yeah, you're so, welcome. But like that's my it's job too. Like my job at work. My job at work is. That's right. I'm saying is like shut so that, you down. So that's why we did it. We wanted to do it, and I know we have friends and uh, people we can talk yeah. to, and like I know how to like I love a conversation. I can ask the questions, and I love to yeah. get people out. People I don't know, it's a little bit hard. Like yeah. people like that was yeah, like, it's true. Like I knew I knew coming on this show, we we're gonna have lots to talk about. Yeah, I knew coming on here today yeah, yeah. It was like yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a good time because we have actually, we're gonna this is gonna be one of the best podcasts. Actually, and you think and about it, as adults, we actually haven't had a full conversation like this ever. Yeah. No, we haven't. No, but and and this, you know what? This sets it up for that. This is yeah, perfect yeah. for that because now we can actually sit down and we can talk about the things we like. We used to talk yeah. back in the day. We used to yeah. sit down, and we but would we just can speak wisdom into it and perspective. That's right. And the best yeah. part of us, we're not staring at our goddamn phones. Yeah. I don't. I, I've looked at my phone once just to see how long we've been going for. My me. wife texted me, asked me if what I, I wanted if to get myself something I, for dinner. The, <laughs> the, the beer I drank, which was, wasn't that great. I always. If you you don't even have Instagram, do you? No, I don't use Instagram. Yeah, I was gonna, yeah. I was gonna put you on the the picture. I was gonna add your Instagram name. I'm Instagram. like, who's my Instagram? I honestly, I really don't really use social media a lot. Yeah, uh, I know. One You're of hard, my kind of hard guy to get a hold of sometimes. That's right. I don't really use like if Even you look when at my I text you, it's easier for me to get a hold of you on the Facebook Messenger than actually text yeah. you. You know that? Really? Yeah, I text you sometimes. Uh, I don't hear anything. About I don't it. ever get messages from you. You know what though? Like if if it wasn't what for... what number do you have? I got your number. If it wasn't for the Sign girls. Up. And for Shady Wood Events, the uh, event company that I'm that I do, okay, um, I probably wouldn't have social media to be honest with you. I, 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 I post. I the girl like Instagram pictures. because I like photography yeah. too. I like. To I post don't really them. use yeah. Facebook at all. I'll post a few blackout videos. Like I've started doing that recently because yeah. I just like I like making videos and doing the editing mm-hmm. and things like that. Oh, I do have you. Weird. Yo. So I don't know. Whatever happens, happens. So. Anyway, what were you just saying? I'm saying. So this is why we did it. And like, yeah, I was texting him the whole time he was on the show, and I'm like, "Come on, talk man, more. get him, get him talking." He's like, he just wants to play music. So, eventually, closer to the end of it, yeah. he ended up getting him talking because he's just like, "So, why are you into like this type of music?" And he's like, "What are, What are you doing with it? Are you yeah. like slowing down the to, beats per minute, to or him, you know? trying, to trying to get the information out of, him. out of him?" And I was like, "Man, get him talking about the music or after something." After the fact, he texted me like yeah. a couple weeks later. He's like, "Listen, I appreciated you coming on. I'm talking more and more on the on the radio." That's show. good, yeah, because that's that's it the whole makes point. you nervous, right? When you know that people are gonna hear your words and criticize them, when you're not used to doing right. that in a public setting where you're like, "You've never done that before," it's very nerve wracking. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no. And, uh, People are so nervous to come on our podcast. It's it's. Oh, did you know that? Every person you've had on here has been nervous. Uh, the well, last at least, two at least people. Four of them. I love this kind of stuff. This Me is too. I thrive on public speaking. Yeah, and yeah. like when I do my presentations, like the guys that I'm doing presentations with, they don't have the presentation skills. They don't do a lot of public speaking. And yeah. you know, and you know when someone's not good at because yeah, they'll sit there and and um, uh, like and uh, like, yeah like. this uh, thingy uh, and they don't they have a hard time and then like they bounce around. They don't get their point across very well. Mm. They you can't really connect with their message because they're just so sporadic. They don't know what to say. Kind of like when they're and they're 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 nervous about 
<laughs> people judging. And, and I see this because when I do my presentations, and not to knock these guys, they're not presenters. They're, lear- they're learning. They're working on it. They're getting better. It's a skill. But it I is see, a skill. But I, I, when I'm sitting in that room and I'm at the back and they're doing their talk, I see a lot of this. You know, hand on the head, eyes kind of droopy, looking around, not really paying attention. And then when I'm up there, I got all eyes on me and I got ears. And people are focused on me. And it's because I'm engaging, I'm animated. When I'm talking, I move around. I, when they're talking about their issues, I'll be sitting there talking about something, but then I bring their example into my conversation and I draw that real life scenario and I draw it and I bring it into yep. my, what I'm saying and I talk yeah. about their issues. So when, when yeah. you can talk about something that people can relate to, they're gonna and listen. Yeah. They're gonna listen because you're, you're talking directly about the same things that they're dealing with and when you're talking with someone about what their problems are, they're going to listen because they want to listen. They're like, yeah. oh, this guy's going to tell me how to solve my problems or this guy's going to help me. I'm going to give him my full attention. And and you look at today's society. I mean, you look at these YouTube videos and you look at all these – people don't listen – people don't li- literally l- watch videos for more than, that are more than five or ten Yeah, but I was, I was just about to say, look at Netflix. Netflix has cut down on those uh, those comedy specials. Have gone down from like the hours or two, whatever, because now they're down to 25 minutes because they know people's attention span they isn't yeah. as long as it used to be. They'll watch it for 25 minutes. I'm like, no, nope, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Or they'll watch it for the first 25 minutes and they're like, oh, there's my phone. And then they're just listening and then, to the background. Yeah, then that's right. And yeah, like yeah. my wife does that all the time. She'll be watching TV. Oh, she'll be on her phone. And I'm like, I'm sitting there going, like, I want to play Blackout. Like, and I'll just take over the TV on her. <laughs> I'm like, you're on your phone. You've been on your phone for the last half an hour. I'm playing my game now. <laughs> She's like, oh, I'm watching. I'm like, anyway, no, you're not. <laughs> what I wanted to say this. I'm super proud of you, man. As like a, as a friend, and uh, I think we're still brothers. I feel like well, you're still my brother. We don't, you we guys don't... will always be my brothers. You always will yeah. be. Um, I feel like we're like you know we're we're a little bit busy sometimes. We don't always get to talk. And that's the thing. Like yeah. you don't have we don't have to hang out every day to be brothers. We can catch know? right back up as soon as we see each other. That's exactly yeah. it. Like yeah. it's just a matter of like there's just that that long term yeah. respect and love that we have we, for each we other. We got a lot of history. And yeah, 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 we do have a lot of history. And I think yeah. that's one of the things that <laughs> uh, you know like whenever. Like my, my kids, they talk about who who's Butters, and they yeah, have yeah. BA Butters, and I'm just like, oh, that's Jeremy, and my wife knows who you are. Like yep. she can put faces to you guys, yep. and and I, when I told her I was coming over here tonight, <laughs> it was funny because uh, I she texted me that she likes listening to podcasts before she goes to bed. Yeah, I hate it because when I go to bed, I want to go to sleep. <laughs> and when I hear this person <laughs> in the background <laughs> while I'm trying to sleep talking about childbirth or law or the environment and she listens to all the she yeah. listens to a lot of heavier podcasts. Yeah, yeah. educational yeah. like yeah. professors, university people, yeah. like she likes Is that. Is she stuff. Rogan? Is she like Rogan? I don't know. Oh. I don't I can't stand it because when I'm when I'm in bed, I want to go to bed. And when I'm hearing this person talking in my ear, my brain activity is still going because I'm you listening. Can't sleep. I yeah. can't sleep. Yeah. It help, for her, it helps her sleep yeah. because she has that. She can take that in and go to sleep. It's calming for her. Oh, wow. I can't do it. Yeah. So luckily for me, I'm half deaf, as you already yeah. knew yeah. that. What? what? And uh, <laughs> so I just fall asleep. I just go on my, on my bat. I put my bat ear up so I don't hear it anymore. It's muffled. And I go to sleep. And it was funny because I told her, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go to Jeremy's. I'm doing a podcast tonight with him and his brother. She's like... Why are you doing a podcast? I thought you hate podcasts. And I said, well, you know what? I said, if this is the only way I'm going to get your attention, then yeah, I'm going <laughs> to. So she's going to listen to this. She's going to be listening to me. Yeah, right now. Listen to me. <laughs> Love you, babe. Oh, God. Um, hey, right on, man. Cheers, man. We're, we're probably going to, we're not going to finish up. Like, you're not leaving, but I mean, we should probably finish the podcast. We should. Yeah, that's it's a good idea. Two hours. Sam, we are. People have been listening for it this long. They've got some good information on A, cattle, B, problem solving in your management roles, and C, just cool stories about us. Yep. And uh, you know what? I'm happy to come back again. Dude, you can come back you guys anytime. Yes. My door. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm, this is my, oh, this is my thing. I totally love doing this kind of stuff. So if you guys don't ever have me again, dude, yeah, I'm more than happy to come yeah. back. Even and, come on and just talk with other people we have. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And that's the funny thing about this is like we make it open. So mo- I think everyone that we've had on, everyone that we've had on the podcast, we've been like, they're it's like, can I come back on? Can I please come back? It's you guys. Yeah. When I listen, even when from the very get go, it's it's a very chill. What's yeah. up? What the fuck? And I'm just yeah, like, yeah. this is great. Like, this is cool. Yeah. It's a very chill thing. And uh, definitely. I, I Yeah. I'd love to come back on the show again, guys. This thing is awesome. <laughs> and uh, talk about more. uh Crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome stories. <laughs> Fucking stories we had. Anyway, uh, yeah. 
yeah so uh yeah so thanks for listening guys like i said uh you're probably listening like i always say that like on what spotify on but anyway they're already listening on it so they know what they're yeah, listening I mean. to it on yeah uh, yeah. We don't have any sponsors yet, so if anybody out there is listening to this, like, we don't want any money. We're not expecting any money. You don't have to pay us. We just like shout outs. So if anybody has like a business, you know, like like a like a pipe business, for instance, where he sells pipes or he smokes pipes, or if he has a if you have a barber company and you want to talk about our podcast and shout it out, different things, go ahead, shout us out, uh, and we'll just shout you out. Like, yeah. We do have a yeah. quite a like. This is number ten. This is number ten. We've been doing ten so far. Double we, digits. Are you uh, are you getting a lot of feedback? So I look at the analytics and I check out the podcast analytics. I look at the Spotify analytics and our where we get our RRS feed from, uh, feed from, which is Podomatic. You know what? Our slowly and slowly and slowly uh, as our podcasts go on, we have more listeners and more length. So we're growing a community. Our last our last podcast has over eleven hours of listening time, and our podcast average an hour and a half. So that's you know. You know, depending on in how many people are listening, so we're doing. Are you getting good. recognized? Because let me tell you, I was walking downtown no, Galt, no. and I'm walking across the bridge, and there was like a whole. There was like people pulling out cameras and stuff, and they're like, "Get the fuck off the bridge! We're filming a movie." I'm like, "Yeah, but it's me. But, <laughs> but it's you, me." But I do get a lot of feedback from people, <laughs> so I know there's some core listeners who actually comment and say, "Hey, I really like this," or "Hey, I really like this." Or, that was a really great podcast. Thanks for listening, guys. And John, thanks yeah, for coming no. out. It's a lot of hey, fun. Hey, man, thanks for having me. And, yep. uh, yeah, I look forward to coming on again. Yep, thanks. Right Good on, man. man. Uh, peace out. Peace out, everybody. See you. Cheers. Peace. Cheers, cheers, cheers.